Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm out. Right here. Okay. So um, while Joe takes care of uh, his his uh, black screen here, I want to welcome everybody to Comics Cast. Let it out. Another episode today on a wonderful January 24th. 2021. So we're all, oh, there you are. There's a, there's my great co-host, Joe. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody again to Comics Cast Let It Out, uh, where we feature um, independent creators from all walks in terms of uh, pencilers, storytellers, you name it, uh, letterers, publishers, just the whole shebang. Uh, we just want to feature them, get eyes on it. And we have this great component where not only do we interview them, but we also draw along with them. And we always encourage audience participation. So light up that comments field, let us know what you're thinking, interact with our guests, and of course, draw along with us. So I did my little bit about what Comics Cast let yep, it out. Yep. Let me hand it over to my uh, co-host, Joe Tolliver. Boom. <sighs> All right. So obviously this is the first time I tried using a uh, DSLR and uh, we'll have technical difficulties running right off the bat. So I'm on, uh, I'm actually physically here. So I, I, I'm not a fake person. Um, yeah, just make sure you guys are subscribing. Make sure you're you're hitting the bell for notifications. We're building up the YouTube channel. We're building up the Facebook channel. We're building the website uh, because ultimately we need the biggest platform possible to highlight creators. So um, there's a lot of things coming for 2021. Uh, Rick and some others, we're, we're putting together some new shows and we're really going to start highlighting guys in a way that isn't being done on any other platforms uh, for the indie community. So, so get on board, uh, comment. This show is going to always be around no matter what platform we're on. It's always going to be on YouTube and Facebook because it's a great way to interact with you guys and allow your art to come up on the uh, on the page live when we do the shows. So that being said, we we'll go ahead and get started, Gerald. Oh, yeah. So uh, just to follow up on what Joe was talking about, um, we also want, you know, we, our, our main platform is Facebook, but we really want to push YouTube. So uh, with that being said, I would love for everybody to check out this short URL. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at Indie, I-N-D-I-E, Comics Cast. So that's different from our Facebook, which is just Comics Cast. Uh, but if you go on YouTube, look for our logo, Indie Comics Cast on YouTube. And you can see, uh, I guess, the uh, it's now become the catchword that when we describe the number or the amount of videos we have there, we have a plethora, a plethora of videos. So if you hit that video tab, you can see all of our videos from last year. And that includes the Artist Roundtable. That includes Let It Out. Uh, that includes those wonderful bumpers that Joe has been doing, and uh, uh, he's had he's he's added just a, quite a few little uh, interesting things that have been that feature uh, the burn. I don't know if you want to check out some of those. Uh, uh, it's it's definitely a, a resource that you can see all of our guests, uh, past and even today's present guest. Uh, after the show, you can check it out. So if you can't be with us at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States. Uh, you can go here, check it out on your own time. Uh, but we also encourage you just to be with us because we want to encourage audience participation. And that's what makes oh, yeah. uh, our show different is because we want you guys to interact with our guests. We want you to draw along with them. And uh, we want you to be just as big of fans of our guests as we are of, of you guys and of them. So without further ado, um, let's introduce, <laughs> that's the drum roll, virtual drum roll. Uh, what we're going to introduce I, I'm gonna have to say this is a return guest, and it's a funny story in terms of how he came back on our show for today. He was on our show back in September. He was a phenomenal guest, and we couldn't get enough of him, and so we wanted to have him back. So let's have a warm welcome for Mr. You want to bring him in? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh... Oh, wrong! Wrong guy. Wow. You okay, kind of ruined it. Oh, yeah, right, we got so Mr. Paul Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we have to like go in there and like. You didn't um, see the last one. Yeah, no. I'm gonna surprised. do you the. I'm gonna do the mid in black. You guys did not see that person that showed up really quickly there, but you did see this guy. <laughs> this guy right here, Mr. Bob Hare and Bob. Welcome back to Comics Cast. Let it out. Uh, we're so Thanks happy for to having have me. you. Oh yes, it's uh, say hi to everybody first. Oh, hello, everybody who's watching. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> everybody. Uh, everybody. Yeah, because we got like we got everybody. Roy, we got we got Ed. Um, these are all like uh, audience uh, people in our audience that have always that always come back here. So we're we're getting a little bit of a uh, of groupy uh, um, us you know following here, and and it's always Which appreciated. We are hugely thankful for that um, that we have regulars on here that keep the lights on. So I appreciate it, guys. Yes, appreciate it greatly. So if you look at the bottom, as before we get into uh, 
talking about Bob, getting Bob to give his elevator pitch and, and seeing some of his fantastic work since his last appearance here, I want to point everybody's attention to the ticker below. You can follow Bob on Facebook at Bob Heron, and you can also follow him at his own publishing uh, comics. Do it. It's DIY, do it yourself comics. And you can also email him at doityourselfcomics at gmail.com. So we encourage you to check that out. Not now, of course, because we want you to have all eyes on this show right now with Mr. Bob Heron. So Bob, great to have you back. I'm just so happy that, uh, you know, it was it was great doing a pre-show with you yesterday. I, I almost wish that we were recording it and that was actually live because we had so know, much to right? talk that about. That was three hours right there. <laughs> I know. And you know what? It's, it's based on like the uh, appearances of our guests, we're going to hit that, that three hour mark too. But I want to give a little bit of heads up to the people that are watching here. I want you guys to stay tuned because this show is going to be a little bit different. Not only are we going to be promoting uh, Mr. Bob Heron, which is we always do with all of our guests, but we're going to give a little bit of insight in terms of his uh, crowd funding campaign that he just launched was it last week and i'm going to tell you that yeah, it was Monday. funded it was funded in six hours and there were several things about that kickstarter nice. that i think are good lessons learned for any of you you uh independent creators you future independent creators that want to do uh, your own crowdfunding campaign we're going to talk at the towards the end of the show after the live drawings about specifics in terms of what bob did to, to really get funded within those six hours, which is phenomenal. So I really encourage you guys to stick around for the entire show, because uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna learn about Bob, we're gonna draw with Bob, and then we're gonna get Bob to tell us his his uh, his Colonel Sanders original you know recipe uh, for success for the uh, the kick, the crowdfunding Kickstarter campaign that he did. My eleven so, Yes, your eleven spot, your eleven original herbs and spices <laughs> that that, uh, that that you can put into your uh, Kentucky Fried Kickstarter. So, so uh, that being said, um, I'm going to hand the mic over to you, Bob, and you can just pick up where you left off in terms of like what you you know back in September you told us about projects that you were working on, and uh, mm -hmm. where you are now. So let's uh, let me pull up that PDF, and you can go ahead and start introducing your or talking about yourself. Sure. Okay, so um, back in September, uh, I, I was starting a comic I wanted to do called Tormentia. It's a gothic horror vampire comic. Uh, but I also had some projects that I had completed before that that I really didn't do anything with. Uh, so I decided to make it a physical copy and do a Kickstarter for it uh, in hopes to get funding to continue on with the Tormentia comic. Yeah, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna get to that that bit about in terms of like your your Kickstarter campaign, but let's talk a little bit about, I wanted to show some of this artwork that you've done. Yeah, sure. Obviously a lot of fan art here we got, so uh, no one can go wrong with doing TMNT, the Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja Turtles. Little thing on that, I had uh, Gail Simone retweet that. Ah. Awesome. Uh, I don't know, it was so, about two weeks ago that I did it. It was a warm up and I got carried away and then she was like, oh, I like this and like retweeted it and I got a bunch of followers from that. Yeah, I'm going to have to tell you that uh, you're going to see this a lot about Bob's artwork. Anything that he does, when he calls it a warm-up, it ends up being a finished piece. Uh, so so his idea, right. like my, my idea of a warm-up is like like chicken scratch, like stick figures and, and things like that. This is his idea of a warm-up. So definitely, definitely um, his definition of that is, is different from many of us. And, you know, we're continuing down this fan art route, and no one can go wrong with uh, the Thundercats here. So... Uh, tell me, was this another warm up to you? Uh, you know what? I, I, <laughs> half of this stuff is going to be. It was a warm up, and then I get carried away, and then I want to just keep going. This was just a joke. Sometimes I do joke uh, comics or whatever, um, and I was happy with this because uh, I think it was right at the time Thundercats Four was coming out, mm -hmm. and there was just a lot of anger out there. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and like I posted it somewhere, got like five hundred likes. I was like, whoa, whoa, that's like the most I ever right. had. <laughs> this this one came across my feed when you made it, and I was like, who is this Bob? Who is this guy? This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, who is this Bob? And now we got Bob on the show talking about this. And everybody yeah, loves yeah. Thundercats, you know, Thundercats, Thundercats. Oh, but uh, here we go. Here's another example of a, of a warm up um, that, that, oops, let me advance this. Hold on one second. Um, hit the wrong button. Here's another example of a warm up. This isn't this isn't a OC of yours, right? Original character? This is a character uh, creation that I did. Uh, like we talked about, I will have an idea in my head, but once I draw it, 10,000 more ideas pop up mm -hmm. from it because you know how the picture speaks a thousand words type deal. Uh, so this yeah. is my OC ghost girl 
and I will be doing something with that, hopefully uh, maybe the beginning of next year. I'm going to have to call Bob the house of ideas. His mind is like just one constant idea machine. So let's keep on going down this list here. So this reminds me when I first saw this, at first I thought it was like a crosshair and it was like an homage to like a that infamous uh, or that famous, you know, Punisher Spider-Man uh, thing. But then I realized, no, it's a window <laughs> here. And it's so, there's so much action going on here. Um, is this another OC of yours? Uh, it is not. Actually, this was a commission uh, from somebody I know. Uh, they wanted to do a thing and they were hiring me to do it. Uh, mm. The bad news is at the end, they did not like this. I never got a chance to color what? it. I mm. showed them the, like the inked version. And uh -huh. you know what? It, it, it's, it's all a matter of taste, I guess. You know what I mean? Sometimes people like things mm. they don't. Uh, so this one didn't really work out, but I like the picture. So I, you know, I kept it. Now I can just use it. Well, I like it too. I don't know what they didn't. I mean, let's not even go into why they didn't like hey, it. It wasn't the style yeah. that they were looking for, I guess. That, that was basically right. it. Okay. Well, there are our win, their loss. So <laughs> <laughs> let's keep on going down here. And, you know, this is what I actually, before I go on, this is what I loved about this particular composition um, was just the really strong, like, I mean, one thing I love about your artwork is the inks, uh, just how it's so, it's very rich. Oh, look at that. Alton is chiming in it's here. Uh, it's crazy cool. Great job. Yeah, just looking at this and, you know, it's such it's a strong, you know, you have the positive negative space here. You you know, you definitely like I said, I had my own personal biases because I thought crosshair at first. And uh, that was just my own uh, personal like just, I, you know, when I first saw it. But then, you know, I noticed a window. But to me, it's so it's just it's just very strong. I mean, Joe, do you, do you see what I'm seeing? It's just really, really catches your eye. You know? uh, but yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that whenever you're seeing something that's got that much activity in it, sometimes when you see those, the, the black and white, you have to sort of remember that there's colors for a reason and mm -hmm. it, it will separate those layers. If you want detail across the board, like if you're going black and white and that's it, you may have like made the background a little bit less detailed, but there's colors that exist on this planet. <laughs> they have a purpose. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, so this was, was originally supposed to be colored. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It is, exactly. Right. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, Bob Some, is a colorist, yeah. too. He's also mm -hmm. a writer. He's also a penciler. He's also right. an inker. And I just knew that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. One man band. So you know yes. when you're doing something that you would, you would you know, separate those layers. You would find a yeah. way to, to, to sort of develop that. And some people just don't see that. And, you know, sometimes they just don't see what you're seeing. And they're like, okay, well, I want something a little different. It is what it yeah. is. It happens. I think it, uh, he wanted it got, more like a painting, I think. And, like, I, uh, I draw comic art style. So I, yeah. I do inks and stuff. So so yeah. I think that was the, uh, the disconnect there between me and him. Mm. Mm. Well, he knew your style. So, um, yeah, just like Roy said, I love it no matter what. Oh, we got Allison in the house. That looks great. So Allison is a friend of mine too. And then we got our our uh, our friend from Egypt who's been a, uh, who's always been on our sh last few shows. So Sarah, hello. And she loves it a lot as well. So we're gonna keep on going down all these new art pieces that you've know that you done since uh, your last appearance. Here we have um, a sequential. And you wanna tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about this? Okay, so uh, again, from the house of ideas, that is my brain. <laughs> This is another project that I like, uh, again, as a, like a warm up, but it's not a warm up because I want to work on things and I want to get things right. So I practice everything with uh, with sequentials, but this will be a page in another project that I want to do called The Forged, uh, which would be like a sci-fi straight on superhero kind of MCU type comic. Oh. Man, I mean, how many, we haven't even gone through all these art pieces and how many like a new original characters and IPs has Bob like just completely like thrown out here. So for those of you guys who are watching, you're actually getting a good preview of what's to come uh, out of uh, do-it-yourself comics and Bob. So let's keep on rolling here. Now, this is a, this is something that I talked to Bob about yesterday and I was like, tell me the story about the sequential. And this is another example of how Bob's whole like, his whole idea of like, I, I never want to like just draw something without like trying to improve upon some, you know, improve upon a skill. And, you know, he just started out with something and it ended up being this. So, so tell us like this whole like mode of work that you, that you do that, that came, that came up with this. It was practice. <laughs> it was practice for colors. It was practice for panel layout. It was mm -hmm. practice for panel flow, uh, storytelling, 
and things like that. I mean, that was really all it was, was practice. Like I have like a little idea. Mm -hmm. I do maybe two or three pages to tell a little short, short story. And uh, it, again, it's just like uh, with the middle panel here, you have the character breaking the border. Like I wanted to practice with that and mm -hmm. see if I could get it to work and have it uh, be right. Uh, so basically that's really all that was, was me sitting down for like two hours and just putting that together. Yeah. And that's what I, when I was talking to you about this, it's not like you had a, um, like a script or characters or anything like that. It was just like, you know what, I'm going to practice and I'm not going to let that practice just be, you know, on one, one level. I'm going to make it multi-level. I'm going to do things where, you know, like you said, it's, it's building a sequential. It's a, uh, you know, freaking out if you can if working out and maybe breaking some rules like having the characters pop up past those borders you know this is an example you know i think sometimes when we when we approach um practice you know it's like oh we just got to practice on sequentials like uh, doing this figuring out the panel works and the panel arrangement or we might just do a pinup or we might just like hey i'm just going to do head sketches or mm -hmm. or bo backgrounds when bob does it <laughs> and bob says no i'm going to practice i'm going to do everything and um that was what, because you know, I looked at this. I go, so what is this story about? And he goes, oh, this was. I don't know. This could be a story. It could be new characters. This was just practice. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, it just totally blew my mind that he would take it, it, it to this. He's still level. learning Photoshop, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lesson to all of you independent creators out there, artists. Um, you know, just just uh, make it, uh, make your practice time uh, worth it. You know, practice mm -hmm. everything. So here well, it is, uh, Alan, Allison. Phil oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You can read that. Oh, so I'm yeah, not just... the only one who practices with sequentials. Allison said that. Uh, <laughs> yes, Kevin exactly. Phil made a good point up here. He was talking about the rocks. Uh, your rocks are really amazing. What's cool about that is that they're really well done, but they're not distracting. Like they just they look right, but yet they're not distracting. Okay, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that all I did was look for a rock texture. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Put it into Photoshop as the background, and then use a couple of filters. Oh yeah, I, I can. Uh, it was just but practice, it, it, so I wasn't really right. trying to go in and do a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it works. works. It works. Yeah, because um, you know, for for me as a uh, you know my day job graphic designer, I had to use a lot of stock imagery for stuff. But you know what mm -hmm. makes it different is that when you take stock imagery, if it looks like you just put the stock image in there as it is, and then you see another artist or another designer use the same thing, then it really isn't just, it's just like you just used it in the most basic way. But when you use it as a foundation for something that you're gonna build upon, um, then it becomes your own. And I think that's mm -hmm. a, that's another example. I don't want people to think, hey, you, you know, you can't, you're not being true unless you're drawing every little pebble and every little, <laughs> little fracture in a rock. No, I mean, you can definitely do that, but uh, mm -hmm. that's the reality of a lot of work that we do. Uh, yeah. you, know, some, you gotta figure out how you can beat the clock, how you can be the most productive. And then just like Joe said, just sometimes you don't need to like, if you wanna put focus on the rock and the rock is the storytelling, then by all means, tell the story of the rock. But if it's the <laughs> if it's the character that's right. in front of the rock, put the detail into the, the character that's in front of the rock and emphasize that, you know, so anyway. Uh, Practical, practical practice, uh, making sure that you cover all bases when you do something. So now we're going to go into like some of these. Um, this is showing some of Bob's sense of humor. And, uh, you know, he kind of like fooled me because I thought I was like, where, where are these comics? I'd love to read about them. And here we go. Uh, this is just a callback to those of us who grew up in the 80s with Mork and Mindy. Uh, if you remember Robin Williams, this is Bob's humor. <laughs> you want to tell, tell us a little bit about Mork and Egg Boy? Yeah. Okay. So like a couple of years ago, <laughs> there was a thing trending on Twitter where this, this kid hit this dude with an egg and he was called egg boy. And then mm -hmm. uh, like, when I saw that, I just thought it was funny. I don't know. They made a little, you know, comedic video of it, of it or whatever. Uh, so then I wanted to do like egg boy, the superhero. So I did one. Uh, and then like every once in a while, I just do that. And it's again, it's practice. You know what I mean? How do yeah. I get like interesting looking cover and things like that? Where can I place titles? Um, so now I, I do egg boy things just to be funny, but then I got carried away, uh, uh -huh. like I usually do. And then I was like, so I remember Mork and Mindy and Mork was from a planet that has all this like egg technology or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was like, so he's perfect yeah. to team up with egg boy. And uh -huh. yeah, so I'm just, I'm just taking the joke too far. That's all it is. <laughs> it is not taking it too far because here's another example of it, even though, you know, in, <laughs> in comparison to what we saw before with that sequential, with all those colors, this is a black and white example, but Again, here we got Bob practicing things. And this was not even like a commission project. This is just him uh, working through things. You know, he's working with titles. I mean, these are things that I think a lot of artists, until they're 
uh, you know, you know, they're, they're used to drawing things like utilizing edge to edge and doing the full eight and a half by 11 or the 11 by 17, not realizing, you know, there are, there's branding, that's, there's, there's a title, there's like indicias, there's the UPC code, there's like all sorts of different things that have to be put in there. And, you know, uh, Bob just did that. And it's kind of fun, you know, to see that, you know, you see the sunny side comics. I think that's kind of funny because, you know, and then you see like Bob is even here, he's even practicing lettering here. You know, we see like this different uses, different use of typography. Um, you see these word bubbles uh, and it has that nice comedy thing. And I like the little cracked egg thing there. So uh, definitely makes me throw is a throwback to the classic Marvel uh, covers uh, in the 80s. Right. I definitely got that that vibe from mm. it. And we're going to keep on going down this egg boy route with yet another one here. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if you want to do you want to add more to this? I, yeah, I, just, I mean, yeah. I, so this was actually the second one. Like uh, they're being shown like in reverse, but it's not a big deal. Um, so this, I, I come up with a stupid idea, you know what I mean? So I drew the one picture, everybody loved it. They were laughing. Uh -huh. So I did another one and this was the second one. And then as you can uh -huh. see in the, uh, in the bottom left corner, I put like the silhouette of Mork, you know, I gave just enough to where I thought maybe people might recognize him or something like that. So basically uh -huh. like, Hey, here's a special guest for the third fake issue. That's never really going to come out. Uh, and of course, professor egghead is the bad guy. So yeah, just a lot of stupid egg puns was like all I was really going for. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what, are you doing mainly this in, uh, in Photoshop, both pencils and inks in Photoshop? Yeah, I do it all in Photoshop. I'm doing everything digitally. Uh, it just uh, saves a lot of uh, wear and tear on other stuff or, you know, saves Bristol board and such. So I, okay, I draw okay. traditionally. I'm just using Photoshop. Okay. Yeah, of course. Just yeah. Curious. And that's just that's just the uh, um, a trend. I guess a lot of artists are kind of like migrating to. And, and you know, this is another uh, time saving technique. Uh, Bob does not waste any time here in terms of like, you know, if he can go straight to like, you know, doing those mm -hmm. really those really rough, loose digital pencils, he can go straight to inks and and just save so much time. I mean, myself, I would love to be able to do that. I'm still learning, but uh, I, I definitely see, you know, the advantages of all the of our guests that are going straight to digital. Um, so here we go. We're going to keep on going down here. And yet another egg boy, it looks like, I, I guess I got this reversed. This would have well, been yeah, the first one this was the first one I did, uh, <laughs> again, just to be funny. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when I, you know, created like the title header and everything. And um, that was like how it really, uh, was like in the video or whatever the, the the kid hit the one dude in the head with the egg. So I just kind <laughs> yes. of redrew that, but made it, a, uh, I guess, a little more superhero y and action y. Uh huh. There's so is this definitely a, there's definitely a Todd feel to your work. It's yes. incredible. Like I, I could use a huge influence. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't like this head as well as Egghead in the last shot. Uh -huh. Yeah. I would just assume it was Todd that drew this. Like this is incredible. I, the inking style and, and the mouth, the mouth of this guy in the foreground. Yeah. That is like classic McFarlane, the nose, um, your inking style. Very, I can see it's enough to say that you were influenced by him, by him, but your yeah. own, this is yeah. Bob's work. It's definitely Bob's work. Well, yeah, I call I mean, him Todd, Todd because he's cool like that, you know. Yeah, Todd, Todd, Todd and I are cool, so I use him by, you know, I use his first name. <laughs> no, you I know your name. <laughs> I'm not cool. Yeah. Todd, so. he's not, you know, Joe, Joe is on first name basis with Todd. They talk like, you know. They call each other every couple nights, you know. Yeah. Stuff well, like nice. that. You know. sure. Anyway, sure. so awesome. let's let's keep on going. You know what? And this is the part of the show where Joe a little spoiled it a little bit, but you know we're about I ready to go anything. into. No one saw anything. Oh, that's right. That's right. We did the we did the men in black. There's no one behind the curtain. Nothing, nothing to see here. Um, I I I, I did mention that that I'm that uh, Bob was on our show back in September of 2020, and during that show I had a special uh special co-host. Who's also an indie creator? Uh, he's he's done many titles. He has he's definitely uh, very successful. Has lots of things under his belt in terms of you know, running successful uh, uh, crowdfunding campaigns. And yeah. I probably he, probably one of the most successful indie publishers that we've had on the show. Exactly. Uh, I would, I would, probably worth arguing for that for sure. Yeah, I you know we'd have to do the uh, the count, but I think he's well ahead of of a lot of the uh, creators right. we've had here. So he's definitely so somebody that was. Yeah, we definitely need an air drum from everybody in the audience. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I want everybody to have their camera on because I'm going to go to your camera. No, <laughs> okay, so here we go. I want to welcome. Yeah, I want to welcome to this to our show our special guest, and it is Mr. Alton Simpson. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. So, right. uh, oh, now he's, he's up. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Alton, I want to yeah. welcome you. Thank you uh, for for on such short term notice. I was talking to. Uh, to Bob doing our pre-show and, and you, you know, just 
because of the nostalgia. We were talking about his yeah. last appearance, and we are going over the stuff that he had done since he was last on the show. Mm -hmm. And there are some new developments there with vampires in New Jersey. Uh, there's you know a new t yeah. a couple of new titles that are that have that are are coming out. And I said, you know what? Let's let's see if we can get Alton on here uh, just as our special guest that's in in you know this beside bob here in terms of like talking about these new projects because you guys are like team supreme <laughs> so so say hi to everybody alton hello um thanks guys i i heard you talking about me and i'm like who are they talking about my wife would be like who who is this guy <laughs> we're talking about thank you uh, i'm just a guy who got lucky and uh, and i have a lot of ideas just like you guys have i am i am uh in awe of you guys because i can't draw I'm a writer and I'm a publisher. So uh -huh. the things that I see you guys do to me, Joe and, and Gerald and, and Bob uh, are miraculous to me. I mean, it's such a gift to be able to do what you guys do. So uh -huh. I salute you. Um, hey, well, with that's Bob, <laughs> I was lucky enough to see uh, some of his work and like everybody I see, not everybody, but some people I see, I just go, Hey, I like your work. Would you like to work together? And I've been lucky to work with a lot of great people, you know, Karen Nicole and Alfred uh, Trio and, and and Wendy Shaner and Steph Wilson and uh, and April, you know, Grady and, uh, and and Bob, you know. So I just been I've been blessed with the Kickstarters and with the comics so far. Uh, this is Bob's piece right here. He did for Vampires in New Jersey Kickstarter number seven. Uh, we're introducing two new uh, two new characters that are uh, kind of like vampire ninja killers. Those are the best. Yeah, add, they, add, they, add they female contain. ninja to anything, and it's just those are just that's a recipe for badass characters. Yeah, and, I don't uh, ninja too much because that's Wendy's naughty fairy ninja department <laughs> stripper. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they're I wanted a group of fighters to challenge uh, to challenge my characters in a different way. So uh -huh. those were two of them for, for that issue. Every issue for the next three issues will be new fighters. Yeah. I'm just so happy to have you here on here with Bob, because like I said, you guys are going to, um, this was your first uh, engagement. This is the first time you guys collaborated and yeah. we were happy to showcase this and it was just a cover. And yeah. we, were we were pleased to say that there are two new projects that you guys are co you know, collaborating on. And these were some of the artwork that uh, Bob shared with me. And I'd like to take this opportunity to like you guys, you know, just talk about this new relationship and these new characters because uh, you, you, our audience, you get to see it. I don't think it's been officially debuted. Maybe it has, or maybe through Alton's channels, but I know yeah, that we yeah, wanted. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to say that I would like to say it's first here on Comics Cast. Let it yeah, out, yeah, and, and you so. can uh, just tell me that it was, and I'll feel better about it. But, uh, yeah. but anyway, let's 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 I'll talk about this the first world premiere. Yeah, world premiere. You know, and so here's the first one, and I believe uh, it's it's called uh, Bunny in Space. Is that correct? Is it? Yes, yeah. that's what it is. So, Alton, not not a uh, one to waste an opportunity to promote. You can like get swag. Yes. Yeah, I like, yes. I like a t-shirt. I always right. know Spike Lee and, and some of the directors like Spielberg would always have a, a baseball cap with the name of their next movie on it. So right. I always like a good logo to sell it. Yes. Uh, Bob, do you so want me to talk? <laughs> yeah, both of you talk about right. it. Well, I'll just okay. do a sell out. Okay. Of space, I, I, since I started doing Kickstarter, I started noticing it's a whole different uh, crowd of collectors and I wanted to create something specifically for Kickstarter that I wouldn't offer in the stores that I'm in right now where my books are for the most part and for Kickstarters you want to do something special anyway but I thought I'd create a, a specific character so I created uh, Bunny in Space uh, she's kind of like uh, Barbarella meets um, what is it Bob I forgot my pitch now Barbarella <laughs> It's uh, Harley Quinn. <laughs> Harley Quinn, there it is. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a mix of those two characters. She's uh, a person on Earth who gets shot into space, goes to a black hole. And then I said to myself, you know, if you send them into a black hole, I can work with any artist and let them just go crazy. You know what I mean? Because once you're in there, gravity is different. Everything's different. I always used to like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers because their ships – uh, the way they designed the ships used to, it, I mean, the 30s comics and, and original mm -hmm. serials, they would design things that you would look at and go, well, gravity would never support anything that ridiculous. 
but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Once you're in space, you can do whatever you want. So I thought it would be freeing to a lot of the artists that I work with to be able to let their imaginations go. And, you know, I talked to Bob and he seemed to like the idea and bada bing, bada boom. Oh yeah. Bob, tell us your, your whole take on, on this in terms of like, after uh, Alton gave you this pitch, what he, he envisioned, you know, how did you come up with this look? Okay. So, um, Again, the way he described it, Barbarella meets Harley Quinn uh, in space, hot blonde. Uh, I think I was the one that injected like Pam Anderson into it, like the way I wanted yeah. to design the character. Uh, but with that picture, um, at first I was just going to draw, you know, like, you know, beautiful woman in space gear. Uh, but Alton was like, hey, put a monster in there. And I'm like, okay, cool. And for some reason, the first thing that popped in my head was like that. Uh, I don't know if anybody in here is like a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I oh, watch it yeah. all the time. Yeah. And they had, uh, I can't even remember which movie it was, but they had that weird monster um, with the tentacles or whatever. And the guy like runs over and like, like burns his eye out with a blowtorch. If you look, that's pretty much how that monster is right there. It was just in my head. And I was like, hey, I, I thought I wanted something kind of cheesy like that. That would kind of re yeah. represent like the classic type of sci-fi that he was going for. So that's what I kind of came up with. Yeah, I definitely get this classic pulp, uh, pulp comic, you know, just vibe to it. You know, the colors though pop. And, you know, I, I think that this, this is an example of, um, of uh, Bob's other talent, which is coloring. Uh, he just, he's the whole package here. You know, he took, took a, a Alton's concept and took it to another level. And it definitely has that homage to like those comics of, uh, of yesteryear, we won't talk about like what year that was, but it definitely definitely have an appreciation for it. And uh, I see the Pam Pam Anderson vibe to it. Uh, and the yeah, others, there's humor in this too. And, and you know, I I I see your inking with your coloring uh, just adds like another another level to it. So um, when, when do we have to stop using references to Pam Anderson? Like, at what point are we just so old that uh, the Pam Anderson references does no longer sticks to the anyone under the 29. I know there's a bunch of people viewing like who's Pam Anderson, right? Yeah. Hey, well, Pam Anderson, anyone in the 90s, you you yeah. you'll figure out the appeal. That's the problem. There's no there's not been anybody since her, you know. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, in terms that's of the a, bomb, a blonde right. bombshell, you know, right. in terms of that. And I and I think that that um, might be the last bombshell. You know what I mean? Well, and, 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 you know, we also mentioned like Barbarella. I think that maybe the younger generation who doesn't, doesn't really know. I mean, I didn't really know who Barbarella was. I, I saw, yeah. I saw the, the movie posters for it. And, you know, that's the icon status that some of these, you know, these characters, these uh, uh, movies, you know, like they just take a life of their own. And yeah. it's nice when, you know, as artists, we can do in our own ways, homages to these things, these pop, pop culture icons that are, had been influences or just you know things that we we we've enjoyed over time, and uh, yeah, I, I I like it when you can fuse all those things together and come up with this new bunny in in space. Uh, just it's great. It's just awesome yeah, to see yeah, that. I mean, and, and it boils down to being tongue in cheek and just having fun. Like it's fun to have comics that are just fun, sexy, enjoyable. You know, just some combination of a tongue in cheek thing where yeah. it's written well. And uh, and people understand the humor of it, and it's not like it doesn't kind of cross any boundaries of just being mean. This is yeah. literally just read to have fun. It's going to be kind of enjoyable. It's going to be, you know, at some point it's going to be kind of a little bit for everybody. Um, yeah. But it's just fun. Like there's there's not enough comics right now that are that are going in that direction, and then there's not enough publishers right now that sort of really fit that space. Yeah. So we're sort of in an odd spot, just like anything else in indie you guys have to sort of lead the way, which is why I love promoting you guys because it needs to be out there. People need to buy it because it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. why so serious? Why so serious? Uh, go ahead. Who, who, was, who was about ready to say something? I, I was going to say, I just wanted a retro. I watched a lot of, well, I still do, a lot of retro, retro futuristic 60s and 70s movies where they told us what it was going to be like in the future. Yes. Actually, I just, watched, I just watched Blade Runner again last night. It's on Hulu streaming. And uh, I forgot it was 2019, which made me mm -hmm. laugh. You know what I mean? I was like, that, <laughs> yeah. that's what I yeah, where's our replicants? Well, yeah. Like <laughs> that's small, little, small little detail, so, Al, that the, the main villain in uh, Blade Runner, which, by the way, inspires me to write almost every single concept right. that I've ever thought about. Blade Runner is just up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
the the original villain i forget the the actor's name i believe he was british Richter um, Howard. Richter Howard. he died in 2019 so he yeah, died yeah. the same year that he his character died in the in, in the movie yeah. so, oh wow that's yeah. a odd trivia, mm-hmm. trivia point yeah well, i just well, remember that that scene where he takes the uh the nail yeah, because he, he just wants to have, where he wants mm-hmm. to feel the pain and of course all the yeah. symbolism that that yeah. was associated with that definitely yeah. it's a it's a movie that i don't think everybody can appreciate but everybody yeah. can acknowledge that it definitely made an impact on on the way movies were made and how oh, they were yeah. written and oh, yeah. that future, future noir you know uh Harris put harrison ford on another level uh beyond yeah. han solo so i, yeah. I really enjoyed that and Give um, a second chance everybody it wasn't as bad as you remember it i actually really enjoyed it the second time just just for the record <laughs> yeah i mean i just took my time oh, no. with i mean that, that's in my it. top 10. Yeah. oh the yeah. Yeah. sequel nice but no, yeah, the, the, go ahead Oh, no, no, go ahead. What was your thought? I was just going to say a lot of those retro futuristic ideas, I just think you can have some fun with them, especially the ones I used to watch in the, in the 60s on, on TV that were, you know, mm-hmm. they seem ridiculous when they tell you what the future was going to be like anyway. So that oh, was yeah. the whole idea. And I know uh, a couple of the other artists, actually, if people don't get Pam, they, they kind of made her look like Marilyn Monroe a little bit, which I thought was even more retro. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah, You're it's, the blonde, it's the blonde bombshell Jane Mansfield. That's Marilyn Monroe, Tim Anderson type of thing. So, and the story should be fun. I wanted something lighter, so that's what it's going for. Yeah, um, I know. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want you to spoil anything because this uh, yeah. this hasn't debuted yet. Um, do you want to yeah. tell a little bit about? I mean, aside from the look, the art direction that you had, did you want to like talk a little bit about 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 the story, about where it's going to go, or or when it's going to debut? If you don't want to talk, if you don't want to give away any spoilers. Well, I thought the first thing I would do, since a lot of people who buy my stuff on the Kickstarters are buying for the covers and for the prints was do an actual calendar. I'm a little late with it because I got tied up with my other Kickstarter, but I'll probably release the first thing as a calendar with a bunch of artists doing their interpretation of the character. And I was going to let that influence more of the story. The actual story okay. is um, Bunny, Bunny's boyfriend is like a Elon Musk type type mm-hmm. guy who has a company and he wants to test out his spaceship. He shoots it into space and it does go into the black hole and they end up having <laughs> adventures separately on, on a planet. So she goes through one thing and he goes through something else and then they come back together at the end. But also with Bunny, I was thinking to myself, I could have fun with genres. Like the next uh-huh. one, Bunny goes to hell or oh. you know, Bunny goes mm-hmm. wherever. So I'm kind of like, I like to play around with different genres as I go. So I'll do this one as a comic later this year. I'll do as a calendar first. And then if it takes off, you know, then I'll do more bunny. But it's kind of, it's the first new character I've come up with in, in about three years. So it's kind of an experiment. Oh, shame well, on you. It's been so three years. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I was like I said, you got, uh, between you and Bob, you, buy, you guys are like idea machines. It's like you, you may have not come up with a new character in three years, but you had like, you were, you were generating stories. You were thinking yeah. about business. And, and, you know, I'm gonna tell you, Bob, the fact that he's talking about like bunny, you know, bunny in hell or bunny in, I don't know, bunny in wonderland. You know what I'm yeah. saying is that mm-hmm. he's going to talk, he's going to talk to you and you're going to be doing more interpretations. I was of already character. excited for the bunny in hell thing. I was like, I'm already thinking <laughs> I'm going to have like a little devil, like pulling her bikini bottom down, like that old suntan uh, uh, advertisement. I thought I'm like, oh, it's already in my head. Like I wanted to get started here while you guys were talking. Oh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Sarah, it could be, I just want to answer the question. It could be a series of books, depending on the popularity, or I could just have a character in different settings every book. We'll see how it goes. But the Bunny in Space is the first, goes to space is the first one. So uh, I, I, I feel like this is like uh, Pam Anderson meets Calvin and Hobbes. Like, <laughs> adult version. Oh, you know what? What I got. It could go what anywhere. I, what I it could go anywhere. Aside from the whole. Right. Uh, you know, Barbarella type thing. I was also thinking this reminded me of like, you know, Flash Gordon. You remember the Flash Gordon oh, serials sure. and stuff like that? I yeah. I was looking at, and you know, of course, the, the classic Flash Gordon movie, you know, which also had, um, oh, what's his name? I was going to say, uh, the James Bond, uh, Timothy Dalton, where he played. Oh, yeah, he played. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, wow, I didn't realize that oh, yeah. was him. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was a, a great movie. And I see so much love in this. I and mean, it makes me think of all these things that, you know, I grew up watching and, and um, yeah, it, it just, it, I look at this and that's, that's powerful. I mean, that's when art is powerful, but it can, you know, drum up all these um, 
uh, memories and nostalgia, and and that's when it really makes an impact on you. So yeah, that's I, I want all of our viewers to uh, make sure that you uh, keep up with Alton Simpson, uh, with you know, uh, Vampires of New Jersey fame. Look out for when Bunny um, when Bunny uh, drops, uh, and it's, yeah. I'm just gonna say Bunny because it's gonna it is Bunny in space, but it's gonna keep on evolving, you know, beyond yeah. space. But uh, I just really wanted to do that. Now that was the first project um, that Alton and Bob collaborate, or not? That's the the, the project after the cover, yeah. right? So that's the second one. They have a mm -hmm. third one. They have a third one that's coming up and we don't have anything that we can show you in terms of it's so hush hush, top secret. It's still, you know, still in development, but we what? get to talk about it. You know, we get to talk a little bit about it, but what I loved about it Man. was the fantastic <laughs> logos <laughs> that, came, that came along with it. So here we go. This is the announcement. They're doing the Witches of, Winch of Westchester and, right. um, this logo oh, is phenomenal. As a as a graphic designer, I yeah. just love this. I love this. And there's another another version here. Um, I'm not sure which is the official one, but Alton gave them both to me. And you yeah. know what? I saw this, and when you see some of the more of the art that 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 Bob has done, I am so excited to see what kind of um, sequential work he's going to be doing for Alton. So right. the two of you, you want to talk a little bit about about the witches of Westchester and your team collaboration on this. Uh, let me answer Roy's question real quick. Okay. <laughs> says, like, typically come up with characters first or the plot. And it usually I come up, I look at what everybody else is doing. And then I think about things I like, and I try and find a twist on it. Uh, like vampires in New Jersey is like vampires versus the mob or true blood versus Sopranos. So I try and look for a niche that I can do myself with, which is a Westchester. They actually, I was expanding the vampires in New Jersey universe and I created werewolves of Brooklyn and I have a superhero character that's in the universe, but not so much in the horror part yet. But mm -hmm. Witches of Westchester, I introduced, I think in the sixth issue um, and they, they kind of caught on. So I, I wrote the first issue actually uh, a year ago. I was telling Bob, I was trying to get to it this year last year, but last year was just such a giant mess with everything going on. So oh, yeah. I did have, I had it already written and then I met Bob and I'm looking at his, his art as far as horror. And I'm thinking, well, this is almost a perfect fit if it's something he's interested in. So just to tell you the story real quick, and I won't be on long cause this is about Bob. It's not about me. <laughs> I hear my wife saying that right now. Uh, <laughs> but um, they're, they're uh, a group of, uh, four specific characters, uh, teenage witches that are in a college where one of the professors happens to be a witch, also a, a, a woman. And um, they, you know, get involved in different things, you know, happening. I don't want to give away too much uh, because the story itself is kind of compartmentalized, but it is part of the larger Vampires in New Jersey universe. So you can have guest stars and things like that. But uh, the first issue, I don't know, Bob is the only one who's read it. We'll we'll tweak it as we go and make it you know cool. But it's it's I, I used to do or I still I know do all the secrets. <laughs> yeah, I, I still do <laughs> and I picked I picked out in Hollywood, and people always get it when you mix the two together. So it's like Buffy meets Evil Dead. So mm. that's that's the concept. That's a good that's recipe a great combo. Evil Dead sold yeah. me. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. Once I heard that, I'm like, yeah, let's. I I'm for that. Yeah, so you Bob, have, um, do you do any uh, Bob, do you do any character sketches on paper on like regular paper? Any character um, designs? Yeah, any, uh, I have, uh, I'm just well, saying yeah, there could uh, be something maybe that's not really. I don't care if you show it, Bob. Uh, <laughs> it's early. Okay, let me. Uh, it's early. Right. Awesome. So. I don't know. This one might be a little NSFW. Well, oh, let me. Uh, uh, just yeah. hold your hand over the. Just hold the hand over the uh the bad parts. Hold on, there. Let me yeah, send this one real quick. Off the YouTube, yeah, you gotta. Um, <laughs> okay, let me. I don't know if it'll show up uh on there. Let's oh, see if yeah. I can. Uh, Oh, no, but no, 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 this no, is a sketchbook, so I just draw. Yeah, I still do that. He'll it's so weird that I, I'm sitting here drawing on pencil and, and pencil, and then also like drawing on the um, on the uh, computer at the same time. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. Do, it, it's do, wild. Sometimes I do it to figure something out. Yeah. Do me a favor, Bob. 
if you can, uh, you're not using your phone as a, a webcam since I just saw your phone. Take a picture of it and uh, message it to us. Oh yeah, yeah that's oh, a good. Okay. That's a good. Yeah, look at Would this. It work better that way. That's, yeah, that is. Uh, that there is wasn't Joe much in this book. <laughs> and, then, and then uh, we'll Joe. Yeah, we can if blur you guys, out. I can get I actually step away for a minute and probably grab stuff that I have on like Bristol board that was put away oh, in a storage for room. Uh, uh, if you guys really want me to do that, that's no problem. Well, it'd be great. It'd be great. It's, we'll all, it's all about you. Anything even, you want to uh, share. Yeah. Just, yeah. We'll have a, uh, we'll let Alton, I guess, uh, while we're waiting for, for, uh, Bob to grab some of those yeah. uh, traditional art pieces. Um, you know, Alton, if you want to talk a little, or what, you know, I don't want you to give away anything like, so, okay. The witches of West Westchester, when do you think is this, this going to drop? Is it going to drop like, uh, second quarter, third quarter? Uh, when do you, yeah, when do probably, you anticipate? Probably towards the, uh, second half of the year, only because um, I have uh, one to do, and then another vampire to do, and then I have I have two other two other comics, Wolf, Werewolves of Brooklyn and uh, Blackjack, that are in stores that I did in 2019 in January 2020 that I I kind of dropped because I couldn't go to stores and things were so screwed up last year. Mm -hmm. So there's people waiting for those it, it issues. And I write ahead. So I've written, you know, I think Blackjack is up to issue two. I've written five issues of Blackjack. So it's right. just a question of me sitting down with the artist I work with for that and getting it done. You know. Okay. So but, you want to you know, prioritize getting those taken care of before you start focusing on the witches of Westchester. Is that, well, is that like what you're to, saying? The thing about witches is everybody who sees that logo is like, when can I get the comic? And I, <laughs> I, I had the logos made when I write the script and I wrote the script over a year ago. So even I'm like, I want to see this comic. So this, if I plan now, I know I can have it out by Halloween or by. Oh, well, what? that's good. That's a good, you know, uh, that's a good, uh, that's a good drop date. Yeah. The Halloween. Well, you know? I always, cause my stuff is mostly horror related. I always try to push towards Halloween and I figure I'll talk to Bob. We'll work on how the, the you know, logistics and that way we have a nice ramp up to then. So, yeah. I mean, if it wasn't me, I'd have it out immediately. But, I, but, you know, I've done two Kickstarters that funded with vampires. So I have a crowd who likes that. And then from that crowd, they're interested in Bunny too. And then, you know, the shared universe. So it, it's, I'm not Stan Lee, you know, I, I'm an indie guy. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to, do what I, I had to do one project at a time. And also I talked to uh, some New Jersey filmmakers that I met at the New Jersey HorrorCon uh, when we were having cons and they were interested in, in filming a pilot of the first issue. And I worked on that during the, during the, the lockdown with them. And we actually have, you know, I have a budget and I have people and I have a director who's interested and another producer to shoot that when COVID's, you know, over. Yeah. So, so, so I could do busy. That. I really could do that by say, you know, this time next year. So oh, it's like that's, a lot of things. And when you're indie, your money can only go, you know, it's coming yeah. in this door, it's going out that door. And your wife's like, what are you doing? Where's the money? <laughs> and I, you know, I, I make it. And then I, mm -hmm. I literally, as a businessman, Joe knows, you make yes. you make those, those shekels. And the you little bits, you put it right back in. Right. I can, <laughs> and I you, hope, and you hope it equals out a little bit. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, you, so, you you hope it, it goes right. you you're you know you're investing in it that it's going right. to yield more and uh, right. eventually right. people enough people will see it and believe in what you're doing that this will start just keep on going up and then you don't have to mm -hmm. you know you won't have to worry about about making things work it's because right. you just got to create because it'll always I'll, keep on I'll, building. I'll actually yeah. make some news with you guys that I haven't told anybody, including Bob. Oh, Bob, he just told told us that the uh, West Witches of Westchester is due tomorrow. Um, and he's expecting you. <laughs> oh, did you not hear that, Bob? I'm getting off the show uh, right now because I apparently have work to do. I don't think I can pull that off. I'm quick, but I'm not that quick. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Alton, what were you going to say? I know, Alton? Yeah. Um, I've been holding back on this, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but I've been working with Tyler from Comics Launch and uh, with my books. My books are in 25 stores. Now, they've been in 25 stores basically 25 for about two and a half, three years. And they've been selling out and he feels I'm ready to actually approach diamond for distribution. Oh, so awesome. I'm preparing for that, but that's a lot of, you know, I, I, I do everything myself. So I taught myself barcodes, 
how to make barcode. I mean, I literally learned everything. When I did my first movie, I learned how to encode it to shoot it up to Amazon because it's that easy with Amazon. If you guys want to shoot a movie and you want it to stream, they used to do it pretty well. Now they don't like independent things so much because they're making their own films. But right. so, yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm working on that. Hopefully, maybe that'll happen this year. I don't know. I don't I don't come up yeah. with these things. I, I like the stores. The store was like the stores were like, people like your comic, can you make a graphic novel? I didn't wake up and say yeah. I want to make a graphic mm -hmm. novel because that's more work for me. But then oh, okay. I made a graphic novel because the stores said the customers wanted it. So Okay, but, yeah. nice. well, look at this. See, this is Bob's yeah, this is Bob's traditional work, and you can see that it it unfortunately it's pixelating, but you can just see yeah. that that oh. his, his his traditional work carries yeah. over. You know, I mean, his digital work carries over to traditional. It's just just as skilled, just as skilled. Great work. Yeah. Yeah. It's just rough with your cam. That's that's why I was saying you might want to just take a few quick snapshots, especially anything All right, I'm gonna like take snapshots. Yeah, yeah. Promoting any new books or anything. Let's. Uh, yeah. All right. Let me um, let me set. share. Um, let me share what he sent me. Um, let me go into uh, application. So, so Bob just shared this with me right here. And is Bob oh. still on here? I don't know what what this Bob. Yes. What what is this this thing that you just sent me? Um, uh, that's a page of Torment Tormentia. I did it the other day, and I I thought it was cool, so I just sent it. I had it on my phone. So I oh okay, all right, okay. We we don't want to like show this just yet because I have some Tormentia stuff that I want to add to it. But yeah, so you, our audience are getting a little preview of some Tormentia stuff. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna cut out, guys, if you don't. Okay, mind. All right, Alton. Thanks so much for being on, man. That was yeah, was a treat for us, man. Yeah, thank you. Well, Alton, I know everything. you guys are working on stuff. I'm always working on stuff. Anytime you guys want to talk, any guys, anything you need from me, Tolliver. You asked for it, all right? All right, brother. I appreciate you it. Too, girl. We'll, talk, support, we'll talk soon. I what you guys do, and you know I, I'm an indie guy, and I want you to succeed as much as I want myself to succeed. Probably not as much as my wife wants us to succeed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I say, wait a minute. You need to put how much money into the website? Exactly. And how much money did you make <laughs> last month on this business? I'm here if you need me. So, all right? Okay. All, all right. right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alton. Mr. Like Alton man. Simpson. Thank you so much. We'll All see you later. Pleasure. Thanks, thanks, guys. All right. So Alton is is a big fan of Bob because the two of them are collaborating on at least two projects here that we we were happy to debut here on let on Comics Cast Let It Out. And you know, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna now that we we got through the wist, uh, the witches of Westchester. Um, Bob, are you ready to talk about Tormentia? Um, are you still? Do you have still? Are you still, yeah, are you still actually, because I found a lot more stuff than I thought I would find. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I'm going to be to do like a ton of, uh, uh, of pictures. I haven't okay. been through like this. Uh, uh, I may have opened up Pandora's box here. I know you yeah, did, yeah. man. You you opened up a Pandora's box of, and any, of year. Any artist, I, uh, <laughs> any artist that has been working Craig, at, okay, at that's all I'm any amount of time. <laughs> any artist... That has been working on his craft for any amount of time. <laughs> if he starts going through his studio, he's just gonna find all kinds of things. And he being, you know, gender neutral, him, they, whatever, <laughs> go through their studio, they're gonna find a bunch of stuff. Like that's just right. for sure. Okay, so um Bob, just shoot that over to me and I'll, I'll definitely show yeah, those we'll pictures. bring it up. Yeah, we'll bring it up, but let's let's keep on going with the stuff that you did yeah, send me we'll, because we'll, there's we don't want to really stall, stall, stall out the show for sure. Yeah, it's, right. Because nope, we want to. No, let's. We, yep, we, I, I'm yeah. done. I sent you. It, you're getting them all now. Okay. Well, probably we're gonna go through these and then eventually, well, maybe toward the end of the show, we'll do some of the new stuff that you sent me. But I just want to like show this this because this is where I was at first confused a little bit because I thought Tormentia was a character, but Tormentia is actually uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, like dementia. It's it's a it's, it's you're yeah, using it as a state it's, of being yes the state of being yes and th this has special meaning to me because this actual drawing of this main character right here I think her name was was it uh red scar, scar red scarlet scarlet red scarlet red, scarlet red. Uh, this actual the basis of this illustration was done on our live drawing back in September and this is Bob again not to let any composition go to waste he went ahead and fit it fit it into a, a mock-up of a comic cover um, for Tormentia. And, you know, this is just another example of how nothing is wasted uh, with Bob. And uh, we're going to keep on going here. We have, ooh, now this is something that uh, 
a little bit of a preview, but I'm not going to say just a preview of what just yet, because that's going to be a little bit later on. But again, another mock-up uh, cover, and this is another one of your original characters, and I believe yeah. his name is uh, Parathor, is that correct? Parathor, Parathor. yes. Parathor. Uh, um, he's a cleric, vampire slayer, uh, mm -hmm. with what I consider to be one of the best vampire slaying yes, weapons. Yes. He has like a hammer. Uh, oh, 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 I can't no, okay, no, let's, 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 let's say, okay, no. I'm gonna save that for uh when we when we okay. really want to go go into the character. <laughs> I wanna I wanna um I wanna keep on going here. This is an, another character. Uh we also drew drew this character during our live drawing. Um uh, you can talk about her. Uh um who is this exactly? This is another okay, one. Okay, so OC. that would be the main character, which at this moment, uh, because when she uh rose from the dead, she has mm -hmm. no memory of her previous life. Okay, right. so right now with the first issue of Tormentia, what I'm doing is her basically uh, discovering that, first off, she doesn't know who she is, but also that she is now a vampire. Okay, she's mm -hmm. she's cursed for all eternity. She's going to be finding that out and then meeting people who will then start teaching her uh, things her about her yeah. nature. Okay. And then, um, and we drew, and I encourage you guys to check out our, our plethora of videos on uh, on our, our website, I mean, on Facebook, as well as YouTube. So you can check out that video back in September. And that's when we had Bob talk about this particular character and we drew her as well. But here's another um, another uh, hint of something that's gonna happen later on in the show. And this is the house of ideas that's all in Bob's head. This is another practice character that, that he just did and it ended, or just practice composition. And then it ended up becoming yeah. a character that's going to be, written by Bob as well. Yep. So well, it's, it's is, actually kind of half written already. Of course it is because yeah. you're Bob. <laughs> you, you're probably coming up with the whole story as you were drawing. It's like, you know, I, I just finished this, this, this salt shoulder pauldron. Oh, and I already came up with her origin story. <laughs> it's like, you just see your, your multitasking in your head while you're doing these things. Uh, but it, yeah, I am I, that person. Yeah. That is that's something I definitely envy. And now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of what we we're gonna what the show is about. Of course, it was about Bob, but we wanted to talk about his crowdfunding campaign that was funded in a whopping six hours here and is still live. And that is the Night Terrors. Um, just to give everybody a heads up, um, Night Terrors is for mature audiences. Um, so just want to yeah. let you know that this is going to be a little more on the adult oriented, you know, in terms of the themes and the story part of it. So just a little bit of fair warning, um, just to, to let you guys know that it is for mature audiences. And so Night Terrors. Um, so I have these two teaser art pieces. Um, you want to, yep. So we have that piece. And then we have this piece, which was used in our uh, promotional banner that we did for, mm -hmm. for Bob. And I'm going to share the actual Kickstarter page. So hold on one moment. And we're just going to give, we're just going to give Bob, just give a little bit of an overview uh, because we're going to go into our first live drawing. And that's where you can talk a little bit more about what we, what we talked about last night in terms of how, sure. who the, the original character is. But let me, let me share a screen and I'm going to, um, so if y'all check this out, right. you can look up Night Terror's mini comic on Kickstarter. Uh, watch the video. Bob is very talented in terms of just getting to the point. Uh, you know, we were we were joking around a little bit last night that uh, I like to say that Bob's approach to doing his very first Kickstarter was very Spartan. He was he was no bones about it. He basically just put what all of his information into that video, and then after he did the video and after he got funded, he decided, you know what? Maybe I should add a little bit of graphics. So that's just testament to his skill. And the fact that people were willing to invest in his, you know, his comic based on just this video. I'm not going to play the video because I'd like you guys to check it out, but I am going to show you these numbers. Look at this. Just, you know, it was a $600 goal. He's at a thousand already. 64 backers. That means that if, unless Bob has 64 brothers and sisters and uncles, cousins, roommates, and, you know, relatives and friends and family that, you know, that means that 64 people believed in him when they just saw this little video here. So it's very compelling. You've seen his artwork, so you know that there's there's talent behind this. And then later on, I was talking to Bob. I said, hey, why don't you add a little bit of, of a preview of what's inside this mini comic book? And that's another thing about this. It is done. It's signed, sealed, it's, it's ready to be delivered. He just needs to know the number that he needs to print. And true to the name of his company, Do It Yourself Comics, He's doing it himself. He's investing in a print, you know, his own printer. He's going to be hand assembling and printing this. So you know that through the blood, sweat, and tears of Bob Heron, you're going to get something that was put together with love. And you're going to see this in these this artwork that I'm going to show here. Um, so Bob, 
without giving, because, you know, we're going to talk about the original character that we're going to draw, but I just want you to give a little bit of an overview of, of you know, what, what uh, Night Terrors is going to be composed of, or like what the story in the mini comic book is about. And I'm just going to scroll through this to show some of the artwork. So, Bob, take it away. Yeah, sure. Okay, so... Um... Think of this as like in a realm of like a Twilight Zone type thing, you know. Uh, uh, but basically, there are two strangers at night in a seedy neighborhood. Both of them are looking to do something. Both of them have bad intentions, okay? And they end up meeting, um, thinking that they're going to get one over on the other. Uh, from that point, um, it does take a dark turn, okay? And again, this is for mature readers. This is where, uh, you know, we'll have a... Uh, there's some blood and gore nudity language. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what's going to be <laughs> going on there. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, so we have a dark turn. Uh, and then we have the surprise, uh, another surprise twist towards the end. Uh, now, it's just a short story. Uh -oh. oh, were you it's losing? Are about losing 20 pages. Okay. okay. Oh, no. I did okay, add good. a small Come preview back, of the next Night Terrors book. A small taste of that. But... Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, with this, again, just short story, uh, but basically um, one wants to get over on the other with, uh, so we have uh, this this gentleman here. Um, he, it's stated he's a med student. I call him the surgeon, okay? Uh, <laughs> and then we have the lady of the night, okay? And we yes. can pretty much guess, you know, what might be going through her head, okay? And uh, when they meet, um, you know, again, one gets to jump on the other, uh, the other wakes up to find you know oh my god what is this situation here or whatever and then again it uh, we get another twist you know something else happens I, again i don't want to give too much away it's a short story so i can't really go too much further into it yeah and that's what i want people to know is that um it's not what it appears you know this is a good teaser um in terms of what, what bob and i talked about and i don't even know the whole story but i, I just want to say that it has that kind of twist and that twist could quote unquote be supernatural. Um, it's not what you think might happen. It's it's one of those things. And that's why I think that we got, why I got funded um, in terms of like so quickly is that it was enough what Bob's description was and his phenomenal art and his just being able to talk about what this product is gonna be about. Um, I mean, about his project that really sold it. And um, I can't say again, it is for mature readers. So, you know, you're gonna give that little disclaimer out there. It is gonna be uh, more adult oriented, but uh, if you want to, you know, read the, get the book, get the book. It's, it's it'll allow you to kind of, uh, you can dwell, delve into to, uh, Bob's mind. And I I'm almost waiting for that M. Night Shyamalan uh, you know, uh, type type twist. Um, you know, his earlier movies, not his older, his his more recent ones, because you know, we're gonna forget Avatar. That was just <laughs> right. But uh, you know, when we talk about like you know the oh, signs, like and we talk, that was good. Yes, yes, yeah. There were some really. They had some good ones, and he uh he did yeah. he did have some bombs. But um, I'm gonna say that this is a hit. This is gonna hit, and I want people to check it out. So um, the two characters, and you know, before we get into the live drawing, because this is this is a perfect transition to go into that. I wanted to say that. One of the cool things about this is Bob's storytelling here. Um, it's it's a uh, it's interesting that you know when you read this, you're going to see a different type of storytelling because you know you, it's not as so much important that you know this character is named that and this you know, this character is named this because there is like I, actually there's I don't from Bob you can correct me there is no name there's no name for the surgeon um, we're going to call the the lady the lady of the night um, so there's no names here so it's kind of interesting how how you're going about telling the story and I think that is another thing you know aside from the great art and the twist that you can look forward to it's this cool storytelling right. I mean right? they want to be kind of secretive you know what I mean they don't they're not looking to share their lives together here again they both have a goal they want to do or whatever but but mm -hmm. uh it's who was going to get to it first or something like that uh but but I I used basically scenery and um and things to kind of describe what the character would be okay you see the guy he's wearing a backpack glasses he looks kind of clean cut he's in uh the what looks like the red light district you know what i mean then he comes mm -hmm. across this beautiful woman so it kind of gives you the impression of what this beautiful woman is without having to actually say it right right and i think that's one of the just really cool things is there's just enough intrigue that that would uh, get you going in terms of that and so with that being said um i'm setting up my art cam right now and let me see if i can just i'm gonna um while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and talk about the character that we're going to be drawing. And um, so, those of us who want to draw along with us, I'm just going to give you a, a preview. So this, it's we're going to refer to her as the Lady of the Night, um, and she is this character that you see right here. Now, um, 
I, I want to say that there's more than when we're when we're looking at this character. I think this is a good exercise for for all of us as artists. Is that you know there's a lot of suggestion. You know that we could think about what is the lady of the night, and I just hinted a little bit about that supernatural aspect of it. So so what I think of that mm -hmm. that all of us when we're looking at this is like, hey, when we approach this as storytellers, tellers as visual storytellers, what can we do in an illustration to 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 tell a story that's compelling, that maybe is suggestive. Uh, and that's a challenge in itself. You know, not, you know, everybody can, I mean, everybody can try and just do a pinup, but what can you tell in the expression? What can you tell in the body language? And I think that's one of the things that I encourage that if you're going to draw along with us, challenge yourself to think about that. I know that both uh, Bob and I already talked about maybe what kind of approaches we could do, but this would be a fun exercise. And Joe, if you want to draw along with us too, you're welcome to. Uh, but here we are, we're going to start our first drawing exercise. So, um, while I'm setting up my art cam, uh, go ahead and add, Joe, if you go ahead and add Bob's screen. Yeah, there it is. Just That's why Joe is such a great co-host. He had it ready to go. Um, give me a moment. I'm going to get my art cam set up. And uh, Bob, mm -hmm. while you're drawing, if you want to tell us a little bit about your design approach, uh, you know, uh, uh, Joe, if you want to ask any questions or maybe anybody in the audience wants to you do know, I, I want to I say a couple of things before we get started. Number one, I pinned the Kickstarter on the top of the comments. At any point you come on here and you're liking what you're seeing, go to their web, go to the Kickstarter and go ahead and do what you're going to do. Um, it's not going to hurt my feelings if you leave the show for a minute and come back and hang out with Bob and us. Um, <laughs> so go, go, go back. This guy's work. It's fantastic. You know, we got Alton on here, Bob on here. They're clearly pros. You're going to get a good product. It's going to be fun. Um, we're, going to, we're also going to be drawing along. Daryl's a, he's a semi-pro. He just dropped everything on the floor, so he's cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was sitting on my art cam and I dropped it, but I don't want to distract anybody from that, so I apologize. But no, yes, uh, yeah, so, uh, yes. yes, but what I was going to say was, okay, so which character are we drawing on this first one? And when you do, guys, go ahead and go to our, our group on our Facebook page that is connected to our Comics Cast uh, Facebook group, well, our Facebook page. It's the group Art Show, so go there. If you can't find it, just search Art Show. It's uh, it'll come up. You can draw along, put post it there, and just uh, put in there at Comics Cast or Joe Tolliver or Gerald, whatever, and we'll see it and we'll post it on the show. So we'll have three challenges or three art uh, draw alongs uh, with Bob's eyepiece, and it's going to be phenomenal. So just draw along with us, we'll put you on the show. All right, go ahead, Bob. Sorry, I had to put that little disclaimer out there. <laughs> okay, all right, so Bob. I was able to get yeah, my no art cam. I'm going to put, my, I'm going to put that into, into the, the screen. screen. Oops. Mute. All right, good. No, you're good. Okay, so I'm, it's all muted so that we don't have any, um, any feedback no here. No echo, or... echo, 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 no echo, 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 exactly. All right, so all right. As, as we draw along, um, Bob, uh, you're, I'm going to put you on the spot to do a little bit of draw and talk here. So just tell us a little bit about, you know, if you oh, want to. We can't say draw and talk. You can't say that. That's that's copyrighted. We'll get. Uh, oh, sued. okay. No, you have to oh, say yeah. it in a certain way. There's nuances to how you say draw and talk. Not to not to take away from Mr. Tyler Carpenter because he definitely has, We're doing has a talk and draw. Talk. There We're you go. Talk and draw. Different. There we go. Clearly different. Totally different. Totally different. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, uh, I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Tyler Carpenter because that's a great uh, show to ch check out. So anyway, uh, yeah. So let's let's start our first drawing challenge. It is uh, two ten, and let's do fifteen minutes. And um, there we go. So, uh, Joe, you can be the timekeeper here, just like always, and tell us hammer down, or you know, hammer down now, and you can tell All us. All right, when you get forty-eight are seconds. Uh, go. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so um, take it away. So take it away. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I guess um, when I was first thinking about uh, making this character, I, I kind of know in my head uh, what I'm um, what I'm aiming for. But the main thing with this was I wanted people who looked just, how do I put this? Uh, normal, basically. You're going to see them and you're just going to be, okay, this is it. So that way you don't see what's coming next. So right. that was basically what was, uh, was what was going through my head. And then later on in the book, you're like, oh, I didn't know, you know, this or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically how I went about uh, coming up with the character and, uh, you know, again, like we talked about um, Pam Anderson earlier, you know, always uh, an influence when you're thinking of uh, of Blonde Bombshell uh, is is something along those lines. Uh, 
you know, and, and like I said, I just get a, an image in my head. Um, like uh, with the other guy, uh, like I was going for clean cut. So I went with like a Clark Kent type of look. Um, and then with her, I'm going for, you know, the blonde bombshell movie star, uh, just gorgeous woman that would immediately catch somebody's eye. Of course, of course. Now, when you're when you're approaching any sketch, anything that you're doing, sort of going in that direction, um, do you do you look at the script and really go directly as hard as you can on the script, or do you find ways to sort of add or adjust to, so it goes to your style? Okay, so for me, um, there are things that I like to draw, and as a writer, I get to write what I like to draw. So mm -hmm. it tends to make it a lot easier for me, so it works a lot better. There are times where I'm just doodling, and then all of a sudden, before I know it, I kind of develop the story. And now, uh, like we saw before with uh, some of the samples from earlier, um, yeah. I, I turn it into a comic page, and then it might turn into five comic pages or, or something like that. Um, and then sometimes I fall in love with the character that I'm making as I'm making it, uh, like with all the characters I have in, in uh, Tormentia, uh, and then a bunch of stuff that I have for Night Terror, which that'll be coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Oh man, your 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 feed is a little rough, but you're coming in now, so we're good. Um, I'm sorry. Right, yeah, thanks, I know. I think I'm having no. uh, internet issues. Well, I can't complain. I had my my camera didn't even turn on when I initially started the show. So what do I know? <laughs> it is and what I, it is. And I dropped mine. <laughs> so yeah, it's, amateur, it's amateur hour at the Apollo tonight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but um, right. yeah, I, I I always I'm always fond of talking to. to do it yourself. Uh, all you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, one one stop shop that does everything because you have worked with other creators who are writing. Uh, so I always found that interesting because you know, do you still sort of rewrite so it works for you, or do you kind of push yourself? Because you know, the go to would make sense is like, you know, I, I know what I can draw, I know what I'm really good at, so I'm going to write to that. So, do you find yourself challenging yourself? Um, just to sort of keep things fresh and new. Yes. Sometimes I don't know what I'm good at until I do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, I know the things that I'm good at and I tend to stick with that. Uh, but then, you know, somebody like Alton says, Hey, what, why don't you look into this? And I'm like, man, I've never drew half of this stuff before. So mm -hmm. now I have to do it. I have to figure out a way to make that work. And yes, it is a challenge. Uh, but challenges, I, I, it makes you better. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I think uh, like with a lot of people when they're doing comics, the first thing they do is learn to draw people. I think you should learn to draw buildings. Mm -hmm. You should be drawing building. Yeah. There are more buildings in every comic than there are people in there. And it's just what it is. Like they're, they're the main character yeah. of almost every comic out there. So I say you sure. like work with that. So, so I don't know. I, it is a challenge, but again, I don't, sometimes I don't know what I'm good at until I do it. And then I'm like, Oh, Hey, I didn't know I was good at this. Now I can incorporate that into the stuff I'm working on. And that would be awesome. All right, remember what you guys are drawing uh, back at home, all right? So this is the character here. And our two guys are, are knocking it out of the park. We got him. We got <laughs> Dave doing the thing. The I think that, Look at uh, that. I was definitely Dave listening to what, um, what Bob is talking about. And I think that, yeah, it's it's. I think Bob has the luxury of being the writer and, you know, and the artist. So he definitely um, is going to be able to play to uh, his strengths in terms of, like, you know, he, he's going to, he's going to write about things that he likes, and he likes to draw and it shows, mm -hmm. you know, that everything is, is really fleshed out <laughs> in terms of like, he can basically figure out the best way to handle it. And I think that's, that's, you, that's a really good thing about being the, the writer and the artist, uh, because you guys are always going to be on the same page because you're one and the same. Um, so, um, uh, in terms of this, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, cause we, we definitely don't want to give away much more about night terrors, but, um, night this particular night terror story you, you mentioned it's a twilight zone thing so there's more that's about this so like you, you uh, since you uh, it's already established that your campaign is successful um can you tell us a little bit more about like with the other twilight zone-esque stories that that are going to be coming out of this um you know i don't this particular character yeah, is not going to be i would love to if you guys want to do that yeah i'm uh go ahead and talk a little bit about it. well because you know i don't want to like no, give away actually, everything about um there may be some recurring characters uh, uh -huh. but, um, but in this book, not, not so much. Uh, sometimes right. it's just 
short story. Uh, one of the things um, that I learned a long time ago is to start small when doing something. And that's why I started with this type of night tires thing uh, to do short stories and, and get a completed thing out there and to have it take less time. Uh, right. well, like, whereas Tormentia is a bigger project. Uh, so that one's going to take more time, obviously, to do. So, so yeah, with uh, uh, Night Terrors, uh, actually, in the back of the uh, of the book, I wrote, uh, there's a, a like, actual list um, that I put together with, like, all the names of what would be coming out. And hopefully this year, maybe uh, half of next year. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I have, like, no shortage of stories uh, that I'm working on. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is that you're a nonstop house of ideas. So it's sort of like, you know, uh, um, you know, because especially this genre, you know, the the kind of like the horror genre with a little bit of noir, you know, added to it. it's like, uh, I, I guess these are all like, uh, they're these ideas that you're you're pulling from. Are they like from, you know, we talked about influences, the, you know, Twilight Zone, and I guess the, you're a fan of some of several horror movies. Like, what what other influences did you did you get out of them? Um, I mean, did you did you draw from to do night terrors? Uh oh, did we oh, lose him? He, he might uh -oh. be frozen. Okay, he so be frozen. Um, he's drawn along. Uh, go. Go back. Black yeah, wait, wait. did you hear my oh, question? And, like, what some of your influences? Uh, I think that's okay, 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 we're back. I'm sorry. I did hear your question. I didn't even know I was. Oh, you frozen. Could, okay. I could hear right, you guys. So. Um, but yeah. Um, so so yeah. Look at like a. Uh, Black Mirror, uh, again, uh, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, things like that. So I have like a sci-fi thing. I have like Gladiatrix, which takes place obviously in uh, the gladiatorial arenas uh, in Rome. That's a story that I have going on. And again, just a short story. Uh, but once I started thinking about it, like I immediately like, oh, I, I want to draw this character. Um, and then once I drew the character, it was like, oh boy, uh, now I've got so much more. And sometimes I have to try to contain myself because... With Gladiatrix, I originally planned it to maybe be a 20-page story, but now that I've been messing around with it, it could end up being like 40 pages. So sometimes, again, I get carried away. 40 pages? Okay. Uh, that's okay. I know, uh, right? It, uh, it's insane. I guess you're going to have to have words with the uh, – with the uh, the artist is going to have words with the uh, with the writer. Oh, by the way, that's you. So I guess you just need to, like, talk to yourself in terms of, like, this expansion you're doing. Uh. <laughs> right, Exactly. Yeah, Black Mirror. I have to tell you that probably was um, that was next level, um, next level Twilight Zone. I remember watching that, and you know, I think they've done like I think is it three seasons or four seasons, but I remember that first season. And talk about a, a thought provoking episode that just blew my mind and made me just like I had to do a double take and just sort of say, "What did I just watch?" And is that what you're kind of kind of thing that you're aiming for in terms of like your your storytelling, you, you want to have that kind of like gotcha. It is. It Sorry is. It's, it's kind of the ideas. Um, also, I look at like Frank Miller, Sin City. He does just a lot of very short stories, maybe just a couple pages, and it could be just a character, a character introduction or something like that. Or, you know, it, just like five pages, you get this like major surprise because you never saw it coming. And I really like that type of thing. So, so with a mixture of like Sin City and Twilight Zone, that's how I kind of came up with my Night Terrors idea. So it, it's like Twilight Zone meets comic books, and I, I'm putting that in there. So and then with a comic book, I can do anything I want. So I'm not like restrained by budget. So I can go like as big as small as, as I want to. With right. It. I think it's the fun thing about independent comics is that you know, especially if you're the if the you're the writer and the artist. Who do you? You don't have to go through any layers of bureaucracy. It's sort of like you, uh, or an or an editor. You know, you're you're the guy that says, you know what? Exactly, I think I'm gonna, yep. do, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a twist, and I only have to ask myself in terms of like, uh, you know, how I'm gonna handle this twist. And um, I think that's that's one of the, the the cool things about being an independent creator. Um, you know, you can you can you definitely can affect the quality, but you can also um, if there's any adjustments that need to be made, you can do them on the fly uh, without having to to really go through you know, like I said, endless bureaucracy to, to make sure it makes something happen. Uh, yeah. Um, doing everything yourself, you're free to do whatever you want to do. And there is a freedom with that. Um, that's one of the things I like working with, with Alton. He tells me to go wild. Um, I don't <laughs> think he knows how dangerous that is, but, but yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so like that, yeah. So 
basically that's it. I, I don't know. I just like to uh, let my mind go free, come up with something. And then like, I, I love drawing. I love it. So that's like the thing I want to do. So it's, it's great that I can take something out of my head and put it out there and everybody can see it. Yeah, just to uh, recap, I guess a little bit from like last uh, your last appearance. How long have you been drawing? <laughs> is it like you were you were born with a pencil in your hand and you say, "Hey, I'm going to be an artist," or is it something that you grew into? Or, Actually, kind of. Or... Yeah, everybody in my family was very artistic. Oh, so it's a family family. My thing. father used to do oil painting. My mother had pictures she had drawn with pencil all over the walls. Um, my brother and I, we we were. Uh, Big cartoon yeah, fans cool. and comic book fans and everything. We're drawing all the time. And then my sister, she's very artistic. She builds uh, all of this, this uh, oh. stuff. Oh, we're getting a little bit of, of lag. Bob, right. can, can you Yeah, sorry, guys. Just go ahead and repeat. Wait, wait, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're yeah. good. You're good. Can you hear me? You're... Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep, sorry guys. I, I think my internet's kind of. Uh, I think my wife's watching Korean dramas right now, and that's what's draining my internet. <laughs> hey, that's no problem. Uh, I, I haven't watched any Korean dramas, but I am a fan of K-pop, so I can definitely say that. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, so uh, I like K-pop too. Yeah. So uh, you have. So it's all in the family. I mean, that's interesting too to hear that because um, it's always good when you have. You know, we talk about. As, as creatives, it's good to like, you know, just you heard the saying is like, you know, you want to surround yourself with people that um, that are just that are, you know, that, that push you. And if you have a family of creatives, I'm sure that you had no shortage of, of that kind of inspiration to push you to kind of, you know, do those type of things. Yeah. And the tools necessary. Uh, my father would hand me a whole thing of charcoals or color pencils or or whatever. So here I am at four years old doodling. I, I'm pretty sure I was drawn before I was writing. Uh -huh. Um, and then, uh, there was like a, um, a time where I got punished for being bad. Like every kid does. Right. Uh -huh. And I was oh, in no. my room and <laughs> then in my room, I discovered, I really like drawing. So I just started drawing, uh, uh -huh. and was like putting out really cool stuff. I was drawing the covers to these like old forgotten realms novels and everything with like Wolfgar and all of this, uh, on it. And, uh, just like recreating these, uh, these like paintings by like Elmore Leonard or, uh, Jeff Easley. Not Elmore, Larry Elmore. That's it. Oh, Larry um, Elmore, great. Yeah, and, uh, I was like Marcus recreating Center. those with pencil and everything, and and again fell in love with it. And then before you know it, I wasn't getting in trouble anymore because I was just at home drawing all the time. <laughs> so that was responsible for. <laughs> I was gonna say I thought you were gonna go with a story. It's like, you know, um, you had all your drawing tools in your room, so it's sort of like you know what. I'll just get into trouble more often so I can get sent to my room. And you know what? It's I can get in trouble and draw at the same time. I thought that's where you were going to go with that story. But um, that, 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 that would have been really funny if you said that. But uh, right. that is, that, that's really good. I mean, I think that, um, you know, we talk, everybody talks about like the where they came from and how they came up with, you know, what drew, drew them to start drawing. And I, I think it's funny, you know, when we hear those type of stories. And I was already like, thinking about all these these funny things that that possibly might have happened when you got sent to your room. And that was just uh, a narrative that I, I, I concocted in my head. Uh, Joe, how much time do we have? Do we have, are we are we past our deadline? Or oh, yeah, we, you yeah. know what? We did hit the 15 mark just now. Uh, let's give a couple more minutes. We'll, we'll unplug. We do have one, um, one piece of art right now in our art show. Um, but uh, yeah, give it a couple minutes and you guys can close it out. I'll stop so, doing that so we can get a finished piece. I'll hide and, yours and as well. That is just there a good reminder too for anybody that's in our audience. If they want, if they do want to draw along with us, uh, just let us know in the comments field and um, let us we'll know that you dropped it, and we'll be ready to go. All right. And sixty seconds. Sixty seconds. Okay. We just. <laughs> Darken up some lines and 20 seconds. <laughs> hey, seconds. Your, your feed looks great, Bob. I think it's a combination of me pulling your uh, your digital feed as well. Yeah, that might be yeah. it. Yeah. I noticed it that the last good. time we did the show. Yeah, a little bit of a it's just what it is. Like I don't have the the best internet uh, bandwidth here. I could buy the best package that I have, but it won't be very good. It's just it is what it is. All right, let's I don't go have ahead and an internet problem. Um, it could be this laptop. 
All right, so Do Dojo Kun sent his in. We got two in. In let's uh, go ahead and see your guys. Do we want to go to? Uh, let's go to do uh, the art show real quick. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I want, I want, then, I want, uh, I want Bob yeah. to see what what kind of creativity he's inspired in terms of getting people to draw along with us. So yeah, let's check so it out. The, the, just remember that these guys are um, are generally they're writers and they're beginners. So everybody, be good in the audience. Um, so we got Brian here. Great work, Brian. Is that Brian Brian Acosta? Awesome. Or no? Oh, Brian. Brian oh. Yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, Brian was a guest on our show last time. And he told he one of his yep. one of, the, one of our he's a writer. Uh well, actually, he wears many hats, but he told me that one of his goals in 2021 is to level up in, in terms of like becoming a better artist. And I was saying, you know what? You need to just pursue that. And here he is Agreed. being bold, Agreed. Being, being, being ambitious. And Brian, great work. Thank you for drawing along with us. Awesome. All right, let's let's bring it up to Brian Acosta. Yeah. All right, and then that's one more. And then, you know what? I like you, you guys are drawing along. Uh, keep drawing. You know, they're good, and you just keep working on it. I mean, the biggest thing about being an artist, writing, anything that you, uh, that you can do, you have to just keep working at it. So I'm sure, mm -hmm. Bob... And everybody else, when they first started drawing, was very similar. <laughs> you just have to start exactly. playing. It's yeah, all practice. Yeah. I did not start out good. I'd love to show you guys some stuff I used to do when I was a kid or, or when I was like 12. And now you'd be like, whoa, really? Right. <laughs> I, I've still got mine where I had the T-Men comics. That was my first comic that I had published with a bunch of different artists. Uh -huh. And uh, I was not an egomaniac at all. I just, for some <laughs> reason, thought T was the best letter in the alphabet. So... I wouldn't right. that. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and pull yours up. I Sarah's still working on hers. Yeah, All yeah, we'll show, we'll show. Props, everybody. Awesome, Mark. Good job, everybody, which is absolutely correct. So let me go ahead and stop that. I'm going to bring up uh, Gerald's first. Uh, I was going to say, let's show Bob's first. Gerald's, but, uh, no, okay. you're changing it up. Okay, changing, changing it up. up. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a pan because uh, – um, Oh, that's I, awesome, I, man. That's great. Well, I, I didn't have a. I, I can't pull back my my phone far enough that's for you guys to see it. So yeah, put it on the wrong All right, I see. <laughs> so so yeah, I wanted it's to. It's a great gesture and everything. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah I definitely wanted to like to, to do kind of like when I looked at your your um, panel from the in your you know your teaser panels that you had shown um, for your your comic. I want I wanted to like play the cameraman and you know it shows her she's holding the cigarette and I wanted to say hey if I. If, you know, I think that's one thing that as as creators uh, or artists, when we when we look at a script or we look at a scene, it's really cool to think of yourself as the cameraman and like think about how you could see that art piece from a different camera angle. And that's why I decided I go, I love what what uh, what Bob did, and I wanted to like flip the camera and just show it from a different angle. And we were talking about you know uh, capturing a gesture, capturing a pose, and then you know of course like the, the body language or the facial expression. And that's what I love about seeing your artwork. I really wanted to try that. So let's let's see uh, let's see Bob's. I want to see Bob's. All right, here yeah, we go. Actually, I can do two of them if you want. Uh, but that was yeah, just me doodling, and I wanted to uh -huh. do it with like a faint color type thing. Yes. Um, but uh -huh. before we got on the show, I also. Uh, also did another one oh, you um did. and then we can zoom out there where i just again just messing around that one's got kind uh -huh. of an anime look to it or whatever like yeah. i didn't really draw an outline to the face uh -huh. so yeah I, I just i mess around with things sometimes it looks great sometimes it doesn't but uh -huh. that was it well this is the uh, versatility in your styles and being able to show different looks and you know no this is what i'm going to stress to everybody that's uh, you know aspiring artist out there is that Nothing should be like to me. I made the regret. I mean, I have a big regret about when I was younger. I would get frustrated with any artwork that I did, and if I if it wasn't mm -hmm. up to like my satisfaction, which was ninety nine percent of the time, it was wadded up and entered into the circular file. And I hate that. I regret mm -hmm. that deeply because you, as as artists that are 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 really doing their journey, we're all on the same journey. We're all learning, and I can only stress how much how important it is for you to keep your original, you know, whatever artwork. Your practices, you know, if you're drawing on a table napkin, if you're drawing on a on the back of an envelope, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a hoarder mentality, but keep it because it's great to look back at what you did. And now, since you know Bob, Bob is doing a lot of digital stuff, hopefully he never hits delete after he does the file. He just keeps it because it'd be great. Because I know that our audience I always keep it. And, and this guy, you're gonna make it really big. And when you do, you're gonna do that great bio book, you know, you know, autobiography or whatever. It's gonna be like. 
you know, when, when before Bob, when Bob was not the famous guy that he already is, but you know, we can put together all that artwork, all that, you know, all that behind the scenes stuff, and it can be put in that book and you can, and it will give such inspiration to, to people to see like, you know what, this is where they started and this is where they got to. And, you know, exactly. it's a learning process. Exactly. So, yeah. So um, I think that Sarah before we go to the next thing, though, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Sarah's because she said she's got her done. And then we're going to go to the next uh, live drawing and everyone at home do what everybody else did. If you missed the last drawing, don't worry. There's two more challenges. Yes. Uh, yes. There's two more draw alongs. I don't know why it's not a challenge. Let's just. Yeah, uh, just draw along. Let you guys along. Draw. Right. All right. Uh, okay. So what we're there we go. Da, da, da. Um, I'm gonna have to guess which one it is. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is. Oh, I think right. this is. I think this is Sarah because I can already recognize her her style. Yep. And yep. Sarah was doing kind of like the same thing. She was like kind of like thinking about that that camera angle type thing, and and I love it. And it it's her style. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Bob was mentioning with his other alternate composition that had a manga kind of a manga anime style, and that is what um, Sarah. I, I as I've seen more of her artwork. She definitely has that vibe. Um, she's definitely she's influenced by like the Disney style as well. So it was it's cool to see this interpretation as well. So thank you so much, Sarah, yeah. for participating. Bob, what do you think? Also, I like to see I like to see the work, guys. Can you hear us, Bob? We're good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I can hear you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, I don't know if um, if I probably should be saying this. If I'm wrong, I'll take it back. I'll rescind it. <laughs> but uh, Rick Rick uh, is working on a new show. It's it's a mentorship show. He's putting it together. It's going to be a little while before it comes out because we're producing all of them at the same time. And I believe Sarah is going to be one of the first uh, artists on there that will be mentored by um, some of the top names in indie uh, indie creation that have worked on on bigger companies. So um, yeah, I'm glad that she's hanging out with us. I'm glad that she's drawn along, and and we'll see her continue to progress, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, Sarah. So is that is that all the people that um Yep, that's all. That's everybody. Yep. Okay. All right. So let's go to our next drawing. You know, we call them challenges, but they're just really draw alongs, exactly. So and we got you got here we get I agree completely. We got uh I'm gonna butcher this. Is it errorless? Um anyway, she says it's so pretty. I agree hundred percent. Sarah, great job. So um let me show what our next drawing challenge is. And you know, usually what we do when we do our drawing challenges. We, we, the second one is usually kind of like a, a free for all type things, but we loved all these original characters that were coming from Bob's house of ideas. That just, he's just coming up with all his, these concepts. His brain juices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just, they just kept on, you know, they just, they just kept on influencing us in terms of like what we'd like to draw. So we're going to do yet another original character from that we showed in his, his uh, uh, elevator speech segment. So let me. All right, let's make sure it comes up so people can see it, Gerald, yes, because not everybody exactly. has a I want to make sure. Memory. Yes, in fact, I'm going to put it up there, and I encourage you that if uh, when people see this art, if you hit screen capture on your your device, that way you can have it on your screen and you can use it as visual. Don't do screen capture. I'll do a weird thing, you know, give you guys <laughs> some hand gestures to work off of. Exactly. Did that help us? Right. So what here artist we go. has not done a selfie with their hand in some weird way? Like Contorted. you always got some weird hand pose. Spider-Man style. Artist right? 101. <laughs> okay. All right. So our, our next drawing challenge is, and you know, we hinted about this because I was just blown away when I saw this, this character concept. So this is going to be another character in the Tormentia. Uh, you know, I'm going to say it's like an anthology. It's going to have like lots of different stories in it. Um, this character is called Parathor. And um, I want everybody to check it out. Do a screen capture of it. Cause I'm going to, we're going to let Bob tell us a little bit more about Parathor, but I want to like bring attention to, this awesome weapon that he has it's like this guy you know there are you know his name is parathor so what obviously you're going to think of thor and you know what is thor known for he's known for his mjolnir is that the way you pronounce it or stormbreaker if you remember mm -hmm. that from from uh, the avengers movies um but you know here we got bob coming up with something he's one-upping thor you know not only is he just he's no longer just thor he's parathor <laughs> and he has something that's better than mjolnir and stormbreaker he has this fist with a with a with a with a stake in it because he's a vampire hunter. So that being said, everybody check this out. We're gonna let Bob do the uh, talk and draw, talk about about this particular character, so you can know what to look forward to. 
draw along with us because this character looks freaking awesome. I'm just going to say that. Freaking awesome. Please draw along with us. And that being said, let's start the clock right now. It's 2.35, 2.36 p.m. Um, uh, Joe, you can uh, ask questions, be the timekeeper, and let's start our next drawing challenge. So take it away. All right, cool. So it is, yeah, like you said, 1.36 my time. Well, it's not 1.36 my time. What time is it here? My phone, is, yeah, it's 11.36 <laughs> my time. All right, my computer is in another time zone. I keep forgetting to adjust it. All right, 11.36, we're going to go for 15 minutes. Right. Uh, so quick math, uh, 1.47. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'm so finish you can math in public. Yeah, you can, you can tell <laughs> us right. like when to stop. And so uh, we'll I'll tell you when to stop. Um, like before, go ahead and make sure that you guys are um, are going to post it in our art show or show art. Sorry. Um, and the bottom line is this character is cool. Let's talk about it, Bob. Um, what is the deal with how? When did you come up with the design for the fist holding? the the hammer portion and is it a kind of like a tongue-in-cheek sort of thing is it always sort of like another element of just kind of like being like because it's funny <laughs> i don't know it looks but cool it, it's awesome and yeah it just, is kind of funny right but it was also kind of awesome and i just i don't know so like the character itself parathor was actually my D D character when i was 12 years old okay <laughs> yes, he was a cleric nice. And it's every time I played D&D, I was remaking the character. So it kind of went from, like, originally it was Paratow, and then it was Peregrim, and then it was Parathir, and then it was Parathor. So, like, I just changed, like, the ending <laughs> portion of the name or whatever when I was creating a new character. But it was all essentially the same character. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I thought to myself, like, oh, well, you know, if he's a cleric, that makes him really great with fighting the undead. And since I'm doing everything in a kind of fantasy adventure uh, setting, um, which I think is what differentiates my vampire comic from a lot of others is that it's going to be in that medieval thing. We're going to have dragons along with, with the undead and, and such. So it's going to add a lot more to it. So I thought it would be really cool to, uh, to use my D and D character um, as a vampire slayer. And then of course, as I'm drawing it again, 10,000 ideas popped into my head. I came up with this massive great origin story for him that I can't wait for you guys to read if you get the comic. Uh, but as I was drawing it, I wanted to give him a weapon and I'm thinking to myself, what do I want to give him? I don't want to give him a sword. The sword isn't good for killing the undead. Um, I was like, uh, you know, I don't want to give him the traditional cleric hammer, uh, mm -hmm. even though that's good. Uh, apparently like you know, blunt weapons take out skeletons or anything. I wanted to up a, a notch and I was thinking to myself like, man, if I made this a giant fist, and then just do a wooden stake in there. You've got the pointy end that goes into the vampire's hearts to, to, to kill them. And you've got the flat end on the other side that takes out skeletons with no problem. I just thought it was the perfect vampire killing weapon. Well, and that makes sense. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it works. Okay, so the next thing. Next question. All right. So when you're going through your process... Um, to get a Kickstarter off the ground, everything like that. You've had a you had a very successful Kickstarter here. Um, so the question is, two things. Number one, you got you got funded right away. What are some of your advice for creators that are looking at pushing into Kickstarter, looking at those fundraising sites? Um, is is the is the magic to gain a following first? Is the magic to sort of not put it at your goal to be at ten thousand right away, like? What is sort of the sweet spot there to sort of when you know you can launch uh, your next sort of project? You know, before uh, I want to cut that question off just a little you bit. You can't cut me off. It's my fault. <laughs> because, because I want to <laughs> yeah, 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 move him. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> because because I want to share that for uh, when we show the page again at the end of the well, year. It'll be all right. You can give us a little bit of information. Okay, okay. Okay. We'll so, go back. So, this go is ahead, just advice. Can... This is just advice for people okay. that are getting into it and thinking about doing Kickstarter. Just okay, a fundraising yeah. question, not going into any specifics. Okay, go for it, Bob. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so I thought to myself that I would have to build up a huge fan following in order to have a successful Kickstarter. But I think uh, the main thing that I discovered with Kickstarter is, is that the quicker it's funded, Kickstarter will then kind of promote your project more, which means more people who go to Kickstarter will see it. So I did not have a huge following. I, I don't feel like, I, I guess my with my comic book page on Facebook, I have about 
I, at this point, maybe 230 followers. I guess, you know, that is a lot. Okay. Um, but I wasn't sure if all of those were in. Uh oh. To, um, all right. Good. Into uh, purchasing the. Um, I just wanted to try it out. And um, cool. yeah, let it let uh, Kickstarter kind of push it up a bit and see what what I can get out of it. Um, and it it worked uh, again, but I didn't go with a, like a huge um, amount. I did keep it in a realistic realm because uh, I knew what I was like going for, uh, what I wanted to want to wanted to get um, in order to achieve uh, what I was trying to do. So. Um, and then not only that, I think the major thing was having a completed um, project. So there was no real risk involved. If somebody were to fund it, they're going to be getting it. There's no way that right. they can't get it. Yeah, I think, that, <laughs> I think that's the thing we were talking about is that uh, about crowdfunding in general is that um, when you, you want to have a product that's at least ideally when I look at it is like you want to have something that's like 90% there because you don't want to have uh, – something that's still in a concept stage because it could push the delivery out like, you know, months or years. And what Bob's approach was, is that he want, he has, it's ready to go. He just needs to know how many people want to, 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 uh, he needs to print. Cause you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's not a unknown factor already. Cause uh, he's, he, he's, he's basically waiting for it to conclude. So there's going to be a final number for him to produce. And then after that, uh, you're going to get to see the artwork right away. And I think that that's what what was really cool. I think that there's there wasn't any like um, ambigu ambiguity in terms of like if it was going to, when it was going to be delivered. Uh, as soon as it gets as soon as the uh, final tally of the uh, backers gets put into him given to him, he's ready to go. And mm -hmm. that's why I thought it was really that's a smart way to handle um, your you know especially your first Kickstarter is that you are going to let your backers know that they're going to have something to look at right away. Well, we need to get you guys. All right. So we are, we got about three minutes left. Three, three minutes. minutes. All right. I'm going to show a little bit about, uh, we were talking so much. I, I'm going to show a little bit about the, the stream here, guys. So you guys know what it needs to look like. So you can see the artist going after it. Okay. So Gerald is hiding his creation with his hands. Uh, it's okay. I have to, uh, I had to dark it. I didn't know we had just three minutes. I might have to ask for an extension so I can get a little bit more time to. Yeah, I'll to give it, I'll, I'll extend it to five minutes, five minutes, okay. five more minutes. Okay. All right. We can see those eyebrows coming in. Looking great. Yeah. Looking great. Gerald is always phenomenal at the angles at the angles. And, and the, one of the uh, things I love most about doing comics cast is that I get to see all these different artists show off their skill set which is phenomenal um i can do certain things but i know what my limitations are and i love seeing guys just sort of going to town and really showing some of those skill sets phenomenal phenomenal all right bob we are on you you're soloed out this is your show yeah, let's let's it's, keep it on him so we can kind what, of like get it what if, if you had one thing to say to your followers right now what do you have right now what is this 60 how many people have backed your book? I want to bring this back up again. I think I got so it. So far, um, it's like 60, 64. 64, 64 backers, 64. apparently. Yeah. And I have apparently like 60 people waiting. Uh, like they set a reminder or whatever uh, okay. that they might want to get into this project before the end of it. And I know most of the action takes place on the first day and the last day of the campaign. Um, so potentially 120, but I have 64 backers. And most of those backers are people I, I don't know. Uh, they're not friends of mine through the, the Facebook page for uh, Tormentor or for Night Terrors. Um, I think they just saw it on um, Kickstarter, were interested in it, and um, and then purchased a copy. So what was you like? Okay, so these guys are outside of your fan, the typical followers. Uh, first off, if you're following Bob, hook them up. Give them a little love. Mm -hmm. these, these indie creators... Um, you always got to remember, and I think that the, that's part of the issue a little bit um, with the indie community. That's the reason why we try to do what we do here, which is to make sure people are getting highlighted as much as you can. Um, you know, it's COVID. We're sort of all sort of getting through it together, um, and not everybody's ready to to go out and, and drop that. But remember, Bob's books are finished, 
and you know that they're going to come in the mail. So that's one of the great things about his campaign is that he definitely has his stuff done. So go back it. I'd love to see that number change before the end of this live show. If you haven't backed it up yet, just remember it is pinned in the comments. You can go at any point and go back that awesome book. So it's going to be great. All right, yeah, you guys, we are looking. We got about two minutes. Two minutes, two minutes okay. Gerald. I'm gonna pull off. I'm gonna pull off your uh, yes your feed here, so no one can see Let's... your your work. Yeah. All right, everybody's just going to town. Going to town. I'm over here just taking it easy. No drawing <laughs> for me. <laughs> I one of my strengths is that I can draw, but it takes me hours and hours and hours. My weaknesses. If I sketch it 15 minutes, it looks like a uh, stick figure. So I think I'm just going to pass. <laughs> uh, you're definitely selling yourself short. Now, um, uh, Bob, also, you know, you mentioned that this character was your, you know, I know there's a, there's a lot of Dungeons and Dragons fans that are um, also are in our audience. I like to think, you know, when you told me about your character, this is kind of like we, we mentioned Todd McFarlane about how he influenced you. I couldn't help but say this is kind of like your spawn character, right? I mean, he was a character that you came up with, you designed back when you were like, you know, a teen, I guess, or, or maybe in elementary school. And now you get the, as a creator, you get a chance to go back and, and make him a reality. I mean, it, that has to be very satisfying, right? Just to see that you can. Uh, you know, it is. Um, and of course, I you know as a kid, when I make this, I had never thought that it would, uh, it would turn into uh, what it is right now. And I, I never knew he would merge with this other idea that I had so well. And again, I came up with just, I think it's an amazing origin story for it. Um, I think you'll see that probably by like issue four of T or Tementia when I can get to that one. Um, and I think, I think, yeah, I think people are going to love it. And it's, it's, he's an awesome character. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say, it's like, yeah, I can't wait to see. I mean, when you, when you hear about creators, like for you, for example, you've, you've been, a, you know, you did this back when you were just a kid and, um, it's always neat to see how, I guess I'd love to see like some of your earlier depictions of like of him and maybe we can we can do a follow up and, and you know when, I, when we post your artwork. You know, you I think some it. of the things I sent you from the traditional uh, might have. Some of the early variations. Some of earlier, it's a possibility. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, so the the only question there is, where did you send it? You sent it to our uh, comic. I sent it to Gerald on or? his uh, messenger. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll look okay. it up. Yeah, I'll Got like it. Okay. Cool. All right, perfect. Uh, that's what I assumed. All right, guys. So we're gonna do pencils down in about twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. I don't have enough time. And that's another thing too. Bit of detail. <laughs> Is that um, also uh, you know, uh, Bob? I don't even have to tell you because you know your artwork is gonna look phenomenal. But you know, you can always polish these up, and we're 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 gonna make. I'm trying to make it a habit to do these post show follow ups to show the artwork that was drawn by our guests, and um, mm. you know uh, that way we can we can do continue to plug you, uh, plug our guests. So yeah, and send it to we, me. Yeah. yeah, we send those off not only on uh, our Facebook groups and everything else, but we also do it on Twitter as well as Instagram. So uh, we continue to expand that, our, our reach. So yeah, clean these up and we'll uh, we'll definitely post them soon. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do pencils down. Okay. I'm going to bring okay. us to our... Um, I'm going to share our art show page real quick let's go ahead and let that, these we have a couple of, of fun sketches here great Ooh, i want to see it i want to see i want to see all right so oh. there's there's the first one tormenta drawn along with Brian from doju comics Brian, doing doing stellar work here getting after it you see us the hand here the fist very nice Good eyes, I like it. And you applied um, the different character designs, so that's good. That's good stuff. And then we have one more here from Brian Acosta. Very good, very good. Good hand. You see all the little elements there. Yeah, everybody did nice. the weapon, man. Everybody did the weapon. Did that weapon, and I like actually. You know what? I'm really kind of digging uh, this shoulder, this hunched over sort of feel to it. Keep drawing. Looks good. Yeah, I like because uh, you know, that. just to follow up on what 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 uh, what. Joe is saying is that you, from this composition, you actually feel like the weight of the weapon, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, has, and I think that's the thing too. Sometimes when you draw things um, mm -hmm. or when some artists draw things, it's, it's like things look massive weapons look weightless to them sometimes. And I love how you really, the body language to show that. So. All right. All right. And we got one more. Oh, uh, look at this. 
There That's we Sarah? go. Yeah. That's Great. Sarah right there. Oh, look at that. I love the over the over the head. Um, you know, she's ready to strike. Or so he's ready this, to strike. Yeah. Yeah. So this, these are drawings that are done after her uh, her mentorship show. So we're already seeing a lot of improvements. So that's great. I'm really happy to, that we'll be able to highlight that on some upcoming shows. Your work. All right, Allison, uh, I'm tracking you've got one coming in. Um, we'll have to see about uh, pulling it up as it as it comes. But we're going to go ahead and stop sharing this and we're going to go and highlight Bob and Joe here real quick, specifically mm -hmm. Bob's work. It's Bob's. Yeah, let's go with Bob. All right, flip a coin. Who goes first? And uh, Bob, 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 let's go with Bob. Let's I'll go, go Bob. first. Hey, he went first last time. All right, all right. Here we go. Boom. All right, let's oh. let's see this whole thing. You're gonna have to pull your. Let's see what we oh, can do with oh, it. Oh, it's me. I thought you we were saying. Oh, Bob. Yeah, that's you. I love the expression. All right, love so the expression. I, I oh, hey, of, I like the spikes on the knuckles you had going there. That's awesome. Yeah, I kind of I and you know what? I had a little problem with perspective here because um. I ran out of space because I really wanted that hammer to look massive and and uh but it's such mm -hmm. I, I picked it I just in order to do that I ran out of space on the left hand side of it but you know you can I I, I, I like to do worm's eye view type things looking up and uh it would have been really cool if I could have had a little bit more space so I could really make that hammer look much bigger so I'm probably gonna have to revisit this a little bit uh after the show but at least I got the whole point across in terms of what I wanted to do I wanted to, to, to show him like he's getting ready to smite somebody or smite a vampire. Smite him, with old a... mighty smiter. <laughs> exactly. So, Parathor, the smiter, vampire smiter. Uh, that could oh, be a. I think uh, that should be on a definitely. Okay. Cover. <laughs> All right. Let's check out. Yeah, let's check out uh, Bob's because I'm so excited to see this. Let's do it differently than that. Uh, we can do uh, better than that, Joe. Here we go. Boom. There All right. Is. Oh. Nice. See, that's that's where you get really the emphasis of the uh, that weapon. Uh, that's, you know, uh, Mjolnir and um, Stormbreaker got nothing on this. So that, that being said, Bob, is there a name for this? Um, is it Vampire Smiter? I do not have a name for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a name for it. I'm going to have to think of something. I'm not going to kid you. I don't have a name for it. Okay. It's it's <laughs> the great yeah, weapon should have names, so I'm going to have yeah. to do something with it. Yeah, look at that. You're already getting some audience audience wowing there. Bob, you're killing it. Um, yes, love thank it. You. Love it. And you know, that's if, if, if in the audience, if you guys got a creative name for what you want to call. Uh, oh, we got to do that. Give us a name. Suggest yeah, the name. Help, help suggest the name. And, and but we'll, we'll forward those on to Bob. And 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 who knows? You could you could be a part of naming this awesome vampire. That could be cool. You know, fist smiting. I don't know. That, it would it would be really cool. So help help Bob figure out what that's going to be. So. Another, I, I thank all of our uh, our uh, participants who helped out and did their own versions of Parathor and that wonderful hammer that he got. He has and um, uh, and yeah, let's continue continue going because I want to get to. Um, oh, no. We 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 talked a little bit about uh, uh, learning about those secrets that that Bob had for his Kickstarter in terms of why it got successful. So let's move to our third one. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And, oh no no uh, not yet not yet I'm I'm, I'm taking over. Oh, you got somebody else that, that, that yeah, drew I'm one trying else? to I'm trying to get the right one here. Sorry. And okay. it keeps being the wrong one. So just <laughs> ignore me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm free here. I'm just a let's do it one more time. Oh my gosh. All right. Am I gonna mess it up again? Oh I keep messing oh. it up. <laughs> the spinning circle of doom. My first yeah. time using this program. There we go. No. Oh my gosh. I too many browsers up. Yes, awesome. I I see where she's going with this, Got and it that. looks that's going to be cool. yeah, that's going to look totally cool once uh, when she gets that finished up. But yeah, great pose, difficult pose, very very energetic, mm -hmm. difficult pose to, to, to pull off. And uh, yeah, let's when you're done with it, make, you know we're still going to be doing our third challenge. If you if you don't want to do the third challenge and you want to finish this up, Allison, by all means do that or draw with us the third challenge and then you can send us this later on. Let's let us know. Post it in the art show when you're when you're ready to go. Oh, who drew that? Roy. Yeah, <laughs> oh that gosh. is amazing. Look at that. Roy, that Roy, is, this, is what, thing. this is what I wanted to do. And Roy just plucked the idea out of my head and just made it much better than uh, I could ever do. And he added the skull on top of it. Nice, nice attitude. Nice catching yeah. that, that expression, body language. Uh, but yeah, he got the whole uh, head tilted back a little bit and you know just i like that expression um, oh yeah very, very i absolutely killed it absolutely killed it all right so, all right, so we're gonna awesome. that down. 
Yeah, let's get down. to our, our third Killed drawing it. challenge. Yeah. yeah, let's go to our third uh, drawing challenge. Let me get pull up the uh, application window. And if you, you could probably guess what it's going to be, because uh, when I saw, again, all these fantastic art pieces, we are going to do Gladiatrix. Now, when I looked at this, uh, there, I, obviously I was floored, but it also made me think of just great artists like Frank Miller. If, if you all remember reading um, uh, 300, uh, any mm -hmm. of his, his stuff, oh, yeah. his Sin City, things where, where this is, again, showing some versatility in Bob's art style is that, you know, we, we, we saw the influences of McFarlane. You see some of the Frank Miller things there, but... They're in, they're just influences. This is uniquely Bob Bob style, and you know this was something that he just was just doing an exercise, and it again became a character. He decided this I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with a new character uh, based on this, and he's come up with a story. So I'm gonna let um, we're gonna start the clock for this. We can talk a little, you know Bob, you can do the talk and draw and tell us a little bit more if there's information you want to share about uh, Gladiatrix and her story. Uh, oh yeah, um, that'd sure. be great. Uh, yeah, the clock is ticking. It's two fifty-seven right now. So, Joe, um, you just yeah. let us know when we get to like the five-minute mark. We'll do fifteen minutes, and then we'll we'll uh, mm -hmm. we'll see where we're at. Now. Yeah, we're All probably right, going to so go about fifteen after, and then we'll we'll start pulling them. So, fifteen after, guys. Fifteen after. Make sure they're up on the uh, the art show. Gla uh, Gladiatrix. It's going to be great. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so, what here. I'm going to do? Everybody, do a screen capture. Check this out. Um, uh, you know, if you want to, we can, uh, Joe, just let me know if somebody comments and they want to see it again. But I really want to take, uh, since this is our last live drawing, I would mm -hmm. love to just keep the camera on 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 Bob's. Uh, I'm going to put a little pressure on you, Bob, because you're going to talk. But we, let's, let's keep the camera on his art uh, because I want people to really see how he pulls this image off off the uh, digital canvas. Fair enough. So, yeah, let's stay. Let's stay. All right, Bob. So just yeah. to let you know before we start going in. Um, couple of names came in uh, as suggestions for uh, your last character's oh, yeah. weapon. Let's hear this. We, got, oh. we got Ragnarok. I have Ragnarok. <laughs> Heart Piercer. Oh, that's Heart a good piercer. one. Heart Piercer. Clavo. Nail in Spanish. Nail in Spanish. That's awesome. I like that. Ooh. I like God. that. That's mm. really good, too. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. That's I like great. that one. Keep them coming in, guys. Love to hear them, and I'll uh, I'll post and we'll see what Bob thinks about them. But I do like that Clavo thing. That's 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 a good one. All right, so we've got an egg. Now, what happens with an egg? You make <laughs> amazing things with it. All right, all right. We've already got a little bit. He's going for a little perspective movement. Uh, the shoulder back. Nice. All right. I'm just gonna do a play by play. I know. I was gonna say that's art. Now, just like if you that. guys are noticing how he overlaps the shapes. Okay, so one of the biggest things, um, just a little uh, tidbit of knowledge to, to, to creators out there, is think about things as shapes, as basic shapes. Don't overthink about specifically um, what each muscle is when you're first starting to lay it out. And think about form. Uh, uh, when you're thinking about those shapes, think about form and then how, how that form would overlap. And that really, really helps. Hey, what's up, Sean? Sean Mendoza is in the house. Sean, draw along with us. Yeah, draw along. This is our last uh, character. We are drawing Gladiatrix. I keep having to read it a couple times in my head before I try to say it. You know what? Uh, I'll, I'll do a mnemonic device for you that will make you, because it's here I came up with it. Uh, okay. Dominatrix Gladiator. Oh, perfect. Yep. <laughs> Gladiatrix. 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 It does. It, it goes in there. Not that I have a lot of experience with dominatrix, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's part of the uh, social consciousness. So, <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, uh, if we want to keep it G-rated, let's say it's the Matrix and Gladi Gladiator, Gladiatrix. <laughs> so that, I don't know, but are there, there's no, there's no. Yeah, this no. is the yeah, there's no. Um, I don't know. Tell us, tell us about the story of Gladiatrix. Is it you know? It'd be kind of cool if it was like an Assassin's Creed type thing where you know Assassin's Creed is not just a period, you know, obviously there's lots of different um, assassins throughout time, but there's a technology, a technological aspect to it. Um, if you played the game, you know, it's not just, just, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the assassin in, you know, colonial America or ancient Egypt or, or ancient Greece, there's actually the animus. Uh, hopefully I'm not spoiling it for everybody, but um, then I think that that was kind of cool. I go, so, so uh, Bob, you, is do you, is there anything you can talk to in terms of like telling, telling about the story about gladiatrix? Like 
that without spoiling anything? Oh, sure. Um, okay, so um, basically she is working her way up almost like the video game. Like, uh, you know, she was, she was taken, she was trained to be put into the arena and, you know, each, uh, each time she fights, it's someone more deadly, someone, you know, she's leveling up basically. Right. But her goal, uh, she has a goal in this. Um, cause again, I like to do the little twist things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't want to spoil the twist, but basically the whole book is going to take place with, with it, the whole thing is just going to be bloody battle, okay? Like, it's going to cut from one fight to the next and all of this, and the story elements are going to fall into place as it's going. And that's when you're going to find out what the real thing is. Uh, but basically, this is just going to be one bloody, gory battle running for probably, like, like I said, now it's like 40 pages. <laughs> 40 pages! Oh, gosh. I know, right? I have to say that there's no lack of ambition uh, on a... On, uh on Bob's, uh, you know, in terms of Bob trying to, to do something, it's like he always pushing himself. Like, I can't imagine. It's like, it'd be great to, when he talks about a short story, I think a short story being like eight pages. And he's like, oh, it's a short story. It's only six, it's only 20 pages. <laughs> I'm like, you and I have different definitions of what a short story is. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I know. So yeah, so that's uh that's basically it. I just I came up with this cool idea and honestly, it's a lot like uh you could say like, you know, I, I wouldn't go so much as the movie Gladiator and Gladiator, a lot of it didn't actually take place in the arena. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, this whole thing is going to be that and we're gonna watch as she progresses to become, you know, the top in that in in you know, the top warrior in that arena. Uh, mm -hmm. but also there's another thing that's going on and we're gonna find out what that is, so I don't wanna spoil it. So in the um, in your your plan of of um, all these stories that are going to come out in you know Night Terrors or like uh, you know as, as part I'm 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 going to refer to Night Terrors as like an anthology. Uh, where do you see Parathor and Gladiatrix? Do you see them as being in in issue two, issue five? Uh, do, you, do you have a plan in terms of like where you're going to put those? Okay, so Parathor is going to be for Tor Tormentia. Okay. okay. Oh, it's Tormentia. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a Tormentia uh, mm -hmm. one. Sure. And uh, mm -hmm. Gladiatrix is a Night Terror's Tale. And remember, this is my horror thing. So right. this arena thing is going to have a twist of horror to it uh, that's uh -huh. going to make it uh, kind of stand out. Um, so with the Gladiatrix one, I had it planned for around book four. Okay. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'm getting all of these out in... Uh, sometime this year oh so you're this is the, so ambition here i go again you're gonna get you want to get this out this year so like it's going to be in the i guess you imagine this being in the uh toward the end of the year uh because you know well uh, i know that uh, uh actually I'm thinking of this one being this one will probably be towards the end of the year yeah if i'm able to do that because i'm doing uh the night terrors too i'm doing tormentia still which i want to get out in the next uh in the next at, at least two months uh, right. And then I have Alton's project, which we were talking about for the summer. So yeah. I have to get that done as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he mentioned something about he wanted it to to uh, to be around. Um, I don't know if you were on camera, you, if you were digging through your artwork at that time, but he was like saying he wanted uh, uh, the Witches of West Westchester to be uh, in um, in October. He wanted to do it a Halloween thing, and I was like, okay, I guess uh, um, that uh, Bob's gonna have to like work that in his schedule to make sure that he can get that all done by that that time. <laughs> so. Yeah, right. Um, I'm hoping I can I can do all of this. I know sometimes my uh, I think my, you know how you say that the stomach's bigger than your uh, your your eyes are bigger your than eyes. your stomach deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that's yeah. I think that's my curse right there. Yeah. Is that I always suffer that idea. Well, the difference is, is that you you uh, you deliver. You've been delivering in terms of like you still find the time to make it happen. Um, so, uh, and I think that's personal challenges that you set for yourself and you you deliver on it. And I think that's the thing about um, I guess something that I want to adopt. That you know, following the the the, uh, the models of of independent creators like yourself is that you know you have to to you have to find the motivation to do this. You have to think about um, making it happen. You can't just sort of like wait for it to come to you. You got to make it happen. And um, you have to have that discipline. 
And I, I think that that's one of the things that I admire about all of our guests is that they've, they've made it a commitment to themselves is that if they're going to, if they're going to commit to it, they're going to deliver. And um, it shows in your work. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I'm hoping I can, I don't know. I, I, you know, as an artist, I still always doubt myself. So that's, that's just the way that goes. <laughs> Yeah, that's something that's that we like all... a thing you can't ever escape. It's a, that's an artist trait right there, uh -huh. right? And then I usually always impress myself when I do it, and then I'm like all super proud, and everybody else is like, "Well, yeah, we kind of knew you would do that." <laughs> <laughs> right, right. People, people believe in you. People believe in you. So. <laughs> I know, right? All right, that keeps coming in, looking good. How did you learn fabrics? How did you kind of get on that? And because uh, I, I I can see how you how you do your shading and your and your I love that gray tone that you put on a lot of your work. Um, yeah, well, I look at this as penciling, so that's why I do the lighter version. Yeah, yeah. So this is sort of like the 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 layout initially. Um, you it's sort of like you're mapping out the 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 folds. You're mapping out some of the light, uh, how it's hitting the shield, which is all great. Uh, but one of the things I noticed on a lot of your sketches is that uh, even the ones that you're like, well, this is a sketch and I'm just sort of practicing here um, is the one big difference between you and Todd. I know we brought it up earlier, but uh, it that I noticed was like you do this really nice uh, tone work uh, it's from the white to the gray. Uh, do you always work on like a white background or have you know, have you found yourself working opposite where you, you <laughs> have like a gray, like almost like that gray paper sort of effect in Photoshop? Or is it usually on a white on a white page? I always do it on a white page. Uh, I, I think when I do it, I always want to simulate doing it as tra most uh, as traditional as possible. All the Bristol board is white, so I usually always use a white. Um, and then I kind of just think of negative space. I keep adding, I think, uh, more ink or pencil strokes on there, and and then I might. Uh, remove some with some white just to, to, to balance it out. So mm -hmm. I, I usually kind of think of all my pictures as being more 50, 50, 50% 50 black, 50% white. Um, and again, yeah, I do a lot of color work as well. And when I do that, I tend to remove all the black. Mm -hmm. I barely do an outline so that everything, you know, color usually accentuates it more. Yeah. Even when you're doing color though, do you have your ink on it? And then you like, you just sort of do either, uh, I want to say, what is it in Photoshop? Is it a color hold uh, where you sort of, you, you break that, that black or do you just fill it in with color uh, and you're a lot less with the, 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 the white and black. I just fill uh, it in with color. Um, I will fill it in with color first. I'll just lay a bunch of colored blobs on the page mm. and then I'll find a shape in it. Just like you would finding a line when you're penciling. Yeah. And then I'll outline what I want with the black line. And then um, I use the, uh, I can't remember what it's called on Photoshop, but it's, it basically, um, it allows you to like, uh, uh, man, it, 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 hold on. A color picker? Is that what you're it's talking about? It's a smudge tool. The smudge, oh, smudge tool. tool. I yeah, use yeah, the yeah. smudge tool to smooth everything out. So I can smooth right. the black lines right. I did out and get everything where I want. Okay. And then yeah, uh, yeah. again, it's like finding the line. So I just do that. And then, I'll start adding details. I'll start adding, I'll do a new layer where I'll add some light and shadow. I'll do a new layer where I add some uh, color tones to certain parts. So like you always want the nose to be a little reddish, add a little blush to the cheeks or some eye shadow or something like mm -hmm. that for whatever character. And I just kind of layer it up as I go uh, and then do a blend of that. So okay. that's usually how I work in color, but I always start yeah, cool. with the uh, with the white background. Yeah, nice. How are we looking for time? Uh, um, five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, we five have five minutes. minutes? Guys, you've drawn along. Great. Five minutes. I thought we had less. That's. It's funny when I think five minutes is. I know, long right? Time. This one seems like it's way longer. <laughs> I know, which well, is okay. I just rounded <laughs> off the time, so I was like fifteen minutes after. That's when we're going to do it. So it gave you guys a couple more minutes to play with. So five minutes, guys. Everyone who's drawn along, go ahead and show this amazing character one more time. guys can see her in all of her glory there i love that that piece everything about that I, i'm thinking 300 i'm thinking uh uh what is it not sonia well i guess it could be sonia sonia i'm, I'm like there's so many cool 
fantasy elements there that are all mashed together to, to create your own specific character, which is just always fun to see how indie creators are just doing their own thing and, and creating something new and fresh, but you can kind of see sort of elements of other things, which is, you know, that is actually pretty, I love it. Pretty cool that you mentioned that, you know, cause I could actually see gladiatrix battling red Sonya. I think that'd oh, be kind yeah. of a, that would be like Who's a good matchup. Two, <laughs> two years away. Two years away? I don't know. We could do a fan <laughs> uh, fan picture of that right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty awesome, right? I would. Are you kidding me? I would love that. I would yeah, love that. So, so hit, hit us that up, guys. Great. Hey, Roy, give us. Uh, can you can you get us a Gladiatrix versus uh, Red, Red Sonia? Sonia? <laughs> I'll give you an extra three minutes. Right. <laughs> He's feeling he's feeling generous. <laughs> well, you know, I could do it because it's I could do it because uh, I've got this blood streak here, so she's actually swiping somebody. So that could be red. Oh, look, 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 look at look at look at if I can achieve this. Yeah. So Bob answering the call, he's like gonna kind of like, right, add I'll something. Here we go. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's I'll see I'll if I'll I can. Allison is saying I need more than 15 minutes to do that. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. That one, oh boy, that would be fun to do uh, after hours. Just work on that for a little bit. Yeah, I could totally see Gladiatrix against uh, against um, uh, Red Sonia. Red Sonia? Rojo uh, Sonia? Oh, yeah. I guess it's just a name, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> So, so Roy said, nah, I ain't doing all that. No, he said, ah, I'm almost <laughs> done with my piece. <laughs> no. <laughs> I ain't doing all that craziness. But that is, I mean, you see that even with the uh, DC characters that are coming in. Um, you yeah. see a lot of crossover. And that's to sort of get that excitement up. Um, they, they did it with Wolverine. They did it with Conan. Where it was, yeah, what was it, the Dark Avengers? They did it with or Punisher. Remember Punisher and Conan got together? Yeah, I, I so it was Wolverine. It was Wolverine, Punisher, and uh -huh. uh, and Conan. I think there might have been one more character in that group. So the mashups are always a fun thing. And uh, I think maybe it's just a lot of fans that get to make comics. So it's always it's just a fun way to do business. Oh, I'm going to tell you, one of the, the right. matchups that I, I never thought would happen. So I'm going to have to go and do other stuff was, here. Let's see. Okay. Man, I'm going to cut away so we don't see his last few movements here. So. But we were talking about uh, mash minutes, mashups. I thought uh, Marvel did a Aliens mashup with uh, oh, yeah, with a lot of their, their their franchise characters. And I was like, whoa, who would have thought you would see Guardians of the Galaxy with Aliens? <laughs> or I thought that was cool. Or the X-Men with, with mm -hmm. Aliens. I just thought that was a, um, a really – Really unique thing. I hope Disney, now that they've acquired the rights to uh, to uh, Aliens, that they give us some good Alien movies. Because um, not that I don't like Ridley Scott's, you know, his his latest Alien things like Covenant and uh, Prometheus, Prometheus. Or it just they're good movies. They're good movies. They just, they're beautiful movies. But I just just the uh, the choices he made in terms of the origins. I was mm -hmm. like, where did that come from? Just yeah. totally yeah, uh, blew cool. my mind. I don't know. I'm just a. I read the Aliens vs. Predator books, and that was my the apex of my love for those franchises. They just did so much cool stuff. So the backstory for the alien stuff never really. I just enjoyed the human element of the alien. Uh, and that's what got me. But yet the Predator stuff, I enjoyed the sci-fi part of this species. I just never really cared that much about the alien stuff. I don't know. It's a weird thing. All right, guys. We just hit 215. Give you an extra 20 seconds to make them last second line. Okay. Um, we've got, uh, I know jo Doju uh, Comics has, has posted his. Wow, these uh, are, our audience is comics. fast. Yeah, posting stuff already. All right. Allison said those comics were awesome. Oh, yeah. They were so Marvel made some really good stuff there when they started uh, acquiring those licenses, or Disney did. Uh, so they did some good work. Um, I believe, I want to say, uh, David Finch worked on at least one cover for those. Uh, for, what were they called? The Dark Avengers. Um, I don't remember what they were called, but it was really yeah. some cool work. Really good stuff. All right, so. Down. All right, let me do one more refresh because I know Brian has posted his. You guys have really kind of get really jumped on us. Sarah, 
was very much inspired by – oh, Brian posted his line. I missed that one. Sorry. Sorry, Brian. So, Sarah, you've got yours up. Uh, thank you for posting. Thank you for showing your guys' love for these characters. Uh, we draw along with these specific characters because we want to make sure that um, artists are not just drawing the big two characters or, or Spawn or whatever, but we need to start making sure we're – uh, we're creating a culture where we're highlighting each other, we're drawing, and then other indie publishers can see your work, but you're also still publishing other characters that are both indie. So even in this broadcast, um, I know that Dojo uh, Kuhn Comics reached out to, uh, uh, to Roy because he saw his work. Keep doing this. Publish, uh, show people your fan art. Show your love for, for indie creators because it's – we got to unify uh, around each other because there's so much good work out there and we just got to work together. I think that's exactly. very, very key. I, I All right, guys, pencils statement. down. Pencils right, down. Drop pencils down. Pencils. <laughs> pencils All right. Down. All right. I didn't talk because they, they made me do Red Sonia. So <laughs> I had to concentrate because I only yeah. had two minutes. So that's, hopefully that's that, I cut that off. I can't believe you did it. That's amazing. Your arm. Twist your arm. <laughs> For sure. All right, let's let's, let's right. show uh, let's go to our art show page. And yep, let's see we're going to start with our art show right now. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the right one this time. Oh man, I forgot which one it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Too many tabs. Dude, Too many tabs. Too many tabs. Oh, awesome. Sarah, awesome. killing it. Sarah, yes. you're doing a great job, killing it. Really as all, that, uh, all the armor, the, the 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 bracers, everything. Love it. Very nice. All right. So, Sarah, good work. Way to draw along. Thanks for keeping. Uh, wait, Roy, what do you do? There we go. All right. Oh, Allison drew one. That is, yeah, look at that. On that is great. All right. I'm gonna, I totally like went to your page versus. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there we look go. All right. I love it. I love it. That's a great that. perspective shot and everything. That's awesome. Foreshortening. Yeah, your foreshortening is, is superb. Expression yeah. is great. Yeah, all the yeah, all the it. different elements are that good. Is great, very cool, very cool. Thank you. All right, one last one. Uh, here's Roy. Roy here doing his deal. Look at Roy. that. Uh, look oh, at the I attitude. Love that. I love that too. That is amazing, isn't it? Show yeah. off, Roy. <laughs> yeah, dude, is great. Uh, I love it. I love it. I have him wearing a helmet, so the haircut was like that's awesome. Yeah. Uh huh. Even I has a is that, Very is that cool. like blood splatter that's a little bit on her face or is that like freckles? I I, know, I guess it's yeah, blood splatter. it looks like a lot of little bit of blood everywhere, huh? Yeah. Getting after it, legs Good. are great. Mm -hmm. Good line weight, always very very yeah. Killer, very impressive work. Killer, very killer. impressive work. Wow, I'm just I'm just amazed uh, at our audience participation. This is this testament to um, our guests, Bob. You're inspiring people to like, you know, draw along. That's awesome, great characters. Man. It's so cool seeing other people draw characters I made. Since that's what yes. I always did, I always drew all characters everybody else made. So that's uh -huh. really that's awesome. It's uh, and humbling. It. I love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you made it. And so, um, actually, did we lose Joe? I guess he might have stopped out for a little bit. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. And, yeah. Oh, you, oh, you got one back. Let's, let, let's let's see. Uh, let's see what what uh, I want to see the Red Sonya versus Gladiatrix. Let's see what right, what, uh, what Bob. Did. Look, it didn't originally start out that way. You guys oh! made me, <laughs> made me do it. it. I had to end up throwing it in. So, oh, so I had to work you really it. fast. It oh, looks I love it, phenomenal. Look at that. You know, and it, and I think know. we all know what's going to happen after I get off of here with you guys. I'm probably going to complete it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, see it. you'll see it on my uh, Facebook page. Yes, you act all like right, that's I a bad wait. And I will make sure that we put this. <laughs> we will plaster across Twitter and Instagram, and we will talk uh -huh. all about it in our art show and our page because uh -huh. this will be fun. This will be fun. Yeah, I like the composition, so I'm going to go ahead and get carried away and just finish it off. Yeah, do it. Nice. We want to see it. It almost, I can almost, it looks like Red Sonya lost. <laughs> it looks like she, like, okay, uh, that so looks my like original a thing was I'm going to have her doing this and taking off some duet, right? Uh -huh. But then somebody was like, oh, throw Red Sonya in there. And I'm like, okay, God. And <laughs> the only thing that really tells you who Red Sonya is is Chainmail uh -huh. Bikini. So you have yes. to get the body in there. So I have to yes. start mm -hmm. repositioning uh -huh. and doing all of that. Yeah. Uh, I think I pulled it off. I think we could look at her. No, and say, you did. You did. Yeah. You, you, oh, you, you yeah, know. Sonya. Yeah, you can tell from the even from it, even though it's a back view, you know it's Red Sonya. You got the chainmail bikini uh, mm -hmm. going on. 
I think that, uh, uh, and you know, if you were to do your trademark coloring uh, accents, you just need to put red accents in her hair. And of course, mm -hmm. I don't know oh, if yeah. that's a, a throat slash, but it looks like Gladiatrix got the better better part of this battle. You exactly. Know, um, yeah. You know what? And maybe, maybe maybe I should go with my own character when I'm drawing it. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. So uh, yeah, just phenomenal. I always am impressed when our guests do. You know, it's always great, a treat to do their original characters and then see what they come up with. And Joe put we, we put that in, or we both put that additional challenge on you. No, I didn't think that you would actually do it, but put Red Sonya on there. I'm that guy, man. Like you said, or we <laughs> talked about it. Like sometimes I like being challenged, so let me try to throw that in in two minutes. You did it. You did it. Um, <laughs> so uh, you know, let's. I, I want to get to the Kickstarter thing real quick. Uh, so let's just show mine real quick, and then we'll we'll talk about about Kickstarter and your your uh, your Colonel Sanders, uh, you know, uh, approach to uh, Kickstarter. So um, here's mine. I'm going to just do a little bit of a pan. So basically. I love it. I made it, Love it. Uh, like uh, she's in defiant. She's like defiant. I'm gonna get ready to like uh, take down somebody. I don't know who it is, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I just thought it's like, hey, you know, I'm not going down without a fight. So it was fun, fun doing gladiatrix. Uh, yeah. I love it, man. It looks like you got everything from from the character. Just it looks awesome. Love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. So let's let's. Uh, I, I I'm gonna say thank you again to our um, audience that participated with us. Um, you know, got to we got to see some really great artwork, and I think that that's really good. That's just I, I like when our show can inspire people to draw along with us because um, they get to experience what I and Joe get to do in terms of like meeting our 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 guests and just feeling the uh, the creative vibe that they resonate and it, and it apparently is going across the interwebs. And we got our audience that are that are drawing along. So let's let's talk about about uh, your Kickstarter. I'm gonna bring up the page and. Um, we're going to talk about the finer details of the decisions that you made in terms of, uh, you know, you Joe kind of hit on it, talked a little bit about it. And I just want to share this with with our audience because, you know, they ideally they're going to be creators, too. They're going to want to put together something. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and crowdfunding has become a, a mechanism. It's become a vehicle that allows for these type of things. You know, these creations, mm -hmm. you know, used to be really super hard to self-publish. But now you have the opportunity to put something out there, and if people can can get behind you, if they can see the potential, it this gives them an opportunity to help the creators realize that. Now mm -hmm. there are some negative things that come out. I mean, I've 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 backed some things that didn't come to fruition. I've been you know screwed over by creators who took advantage of people trying to um, you know helping them get to where they want to be because we believed in them. But when I saw what you're doing. I already know who you are, so it'd be you didn't. I didn't have to. There was no vouching for your credibility, but people already saw this. And like I said in the earlier in the show, six hours, six hours. This goes live, and six hours you're funded. Now you did some things. You made some very deliberate choices in terms of like your. It's your first Kickstarter, and you did some some. You wanted to get your ducks in a row, and you wanted to keep things you know realistic. So I'm gonna let you talk a little bit about it, and and Joe and I will just sort of like piggyback off on some of the things in terms of what your decisions were in terms of why you made things the way they are and why you think that you got funded okay. really quickly. Yeah. Well, I'm going to shut Bob down real quick. <laughs> You're going to shut down our guest? Real quick. Oh, I'm shutting down Bob. I'm shutting down Bob. What is this at 63 at the beginning of the show? Uh, you know what? It may have been 63 at the beginning of the show. So we may have gotten a purchase. Show. So you I think what? so, man. I can double check that. Yeah, we got one, one person that I, so I would love to. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. I'd have well, to tell go me how long back. ago that person uh, purchased this. So give me just a sec. All right, all right. 64th. Let's check the 64th. Oh, uh, I'm trying. Okay, my internet is slow. That's so fine. I'll, no, we'll we got too many things going on. We can, we can check later. We can check later. I just think that I want to say it was 63 earlier. You know, let me oh. read. I'm going to – I need to refresh uh, well, it. They apparently purchased it three hours ago, mm, and we've okay. been doing this for about two and a half. So. Yeah. No, okay. No, oh, shoot. All right. <laughs> I'll still give you guys the credit, though. No, <laughs> oh, whatever, whatever. whatever. Uh, okay, so tell, 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 us go about, home, go tell, tell us about your decisions in terms of like you know about why you set the number for your goal. You know, because you're mm -hmm. very. When I talk to you, you're a very, uh, very thoughtful, cerebral person. You thought, you know, you knew what it would cost to produce. You, you know, you, you mm -hmm. did a lot of research in terms of like if you're going to produce it, if you're going to print it yourself, you're going to hand assemble it. You know, you did all, all the research and stuff like that. So you knew how much it would cost and things like that. So 
go ahead. T tell us a little bit what why you picked those numbers. Sure. Okay, so uh, when I do anything, I'm that guy who who wants to try to know everything. I, I don't know why. It, I, I, so I just I went and researched. I mean, I'm all over the internet reading everything I could. I found out that there were people who who were uh, mini comic enthusiasts, and I was like, okay. Uh, when I found this out, I'm you know I'm keeping that on the side, and then I'm like, you know, I've got a bunch of these short stories that I wrote that are just sitting in my computer, not serving anything. Nobody's seeing them. They're not doing anything for me. I was like, what if I turn one of these short stories into a mini comic because it's a short story, right? Mm -hmm. uh, checked out some videos and such. And then I was like, okay. And then I have, you know, I have my friends and family that were always supporting me. I knew who I had that were going to immediately purchase it. I knew that maybe I had a couple of followers that would as well. Uh, so I started preparing them. Like every week I'm letting them know, hey, this is going to be the day that this Kickstarter is going up. And my plan is basically... I want them to attack it. Like the second it goes up, go and 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 purchase it, because the quicker you reach your goal, then Kickstarter starts promoting you, and then more people see you. So it it kind of just bounces off, of, you know, mm. each thing or whatever. So um, to be honest with you, at this moment, I have a lot more backers that I don't know than the ones I do know, which is awesome. So it apparently worked. Uh, my six hundred dollar goal was basically me wanting to. Um, buy a printer. I want to buy a very good printer to print my own books out. Again, it's do-it-yourself comics. I'm, I'm doing it all myself. You, as you can see, I, I'm that guy. I never sleep. I'm just up doing this all the time. So, <laughs> so uh, when I get that printer, then I'm going to be able to use that to, to produce my next issues of uh, Night Terrors and Tormentia, and then maybe next year, The Forged uh, and all of that. So, so yeah, I want to bring out a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that's how I. So I want to start small and then work my way up to big. That was my plan. I kept it simple. I started with a short story in mini comic format. I gave people the option of getting a digital and a physical copy. No risk because the book is already complete, and all I have to do is print it up and mail it to you. So you're going to get it quickly. You're not going to be waiting a year or two before you you get it. And I thought that was the biggest incentive. If I'm going through Kickstarter and I'm like, oh, this is done. All I have to do is pay for it and I can get it. To me, yeah. that I would do that, you know? So I, that's yes. how I worked it. And, and, and what you just described is perfect because I think that when you look at some um, uh, indie creators that get on there, they, they, you know, we, we talk about your, you being ambitious and you setting high mm -hmm. goals for yourself, but you're being realistic. And you know, yeah. what happens is that sometimes, and, that these these campaigns that are done um you know especially if you're an unknown entity you know you don't you don't maybe have credibility yet you know you don't have a following or maybe you haven't produced a book and then you see these really huge goals you know like it's like uh forty thousand dollars fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars you know and what happens is it can be a little bit of intimidating and you can have the best um uh, conceptual art and mm -hmm. um but you know, if it's not almost produced, if it's not like 90% there, it's it's hard for even if you love the artist, you follow them and you like their style, it's a little intimidating. You know, you don't know if it's going to be, if it, you know, you may back it, but getting to like 50K, that can be a hard sell. So what I like mm -hmm. about you, you, you did a foundation. You knew what your capabilities are. You know what your strengths are. You've got a book that's not 90, you know, 20% there, 30%. It's 100% done. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of finding out who is going to back me and I just need to print it and it's going to be there. It's like, you know, it's, it's as close to Amazon as you can get, you know, you don't right. have to wait like, you know, months for things to show up. So, um, yeah. so now I need to know when it comes in just for the record. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. We got, we got, yeah. So here we no go. One. Nice we, man. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. That's Great. awesome, dude. So the needle moved during the show here for, for you. Yeah. And I think that's, it did. that's what I'm, what I'm saying is like, here you go. You got, you got, you know, a realistic goal. Um, you got backed in six hours. You got a variety of backers, which is really good because, you know, you've seen campaigns where they may hit those those really long goals. But then you look at the number of backers and maybe it's like 10, 15, 20. And maybe they bought like the most expensive tiers, you know, and that's how they got to, mm -hmm. to where it is. You have 65 people that believe in you. And um, yeah, that is uh, that's that's another thing. Because like my friends and family, of course, went with the highest tier and I didn't make a hundred dollar tier. I've seen that, you know, a lot and other things where you get all this uh, special stuff or whatever. I tried mm -hmm. to go with it, but I want it to be accessible too. And I don't want to break somebody's bank. Okay. 
you can get my book for the stuff that's in your couch right now. Just go to your couch and dig out that three dollars and change. That's why I go buy my book. Man. I mean, it, you know, it's not going to break your wallet there, okay? No, no. So, like, I did that. So, like, my friends and family bought the the um, the highest tier uh, because they want to support me, of course. But then most people are are. I'm actually surprised. I think the average one is the fifteen dollar tier, where you're getting the digital. Yep. Uh, you're getting the variant cover signed and you're getting a sketchbook. So like, yeah. that was pretty awesome. I was, I was kind of enthusiastic on that one. I, I, I like that. Uh -huh. And that, this thing too, is that now that you, you've got the hard part down, which is you got funded in six hours, that leaves you these 20 plus days to be creative. Now you can, you can add icing on top of that cake. That's already baked. You know, you can um, add reward mm -hmm. tiers. You know, we talked about some of those things, you know, sketchbooks or stickers. I don't know. The sky's the limit because now you know what you're, and as as the numbers grow in terms of getting past that <coughs> threshold, you can decide, hey, mm -hmm. you know what? I can I can add more, you know, I can add more to that. And it's also it's it's that algorithm that everybody talks about. You know, um, mm -hmm. this is I like had the to best take over. Gerald's yeah. too slow. I had to, I had to take over because uh Dojo Kun Comics decided he said hey, oh, go ahead and six, refresh. So yeah, we're at, look at that. now. Sixty six, look at the numbers moving. And see, this is the algorithm that oh, this is so where, awesome. where, where uh, if you're watching the show and just purchase that, I want to thank you. I, I just want to do that now. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, and I was gonna say is that this all works in your your favor, where you don't even have to do uh, it, it's passive marketing. Um, you basically mm -hmm. are successfully funded, and it just goes to show Kickstarter's watching, and you fall into that algorithm. You got funded in six hours, and next thing you know, uh, Kickstarter is promoting you. They're putting you out there because. It only helps for them to like get you, you know, your, you know, more exposure for you. So you're beating the game. You know, you're working that algorithm. Um, and now it's That's just going to be one of the things in my head when I started. Yeah, it, yeah. and it's just going to be a snowball effect because now for the next twenty plus days, all you need to do is do some social media posts, do the indie indie uh, uh, the show circuit. circuit, you know, <laughs> with, with us, yep. and we can see the number, the well. numbers. Yeah, the numbers moving here. So here we are. We're seeing an example of like just. This is the way that this is the way you're being the Mandalorian, Bob the Mandalorian. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way that you that I think that indie creators um, start. You know, be realistic, be ambitious, mm -hmm. but be real, realistic. Start start small, but then great things will come from from you know you know being small, mm -hmm. and then you will capitalize off, off that. And Bob has this grand plan. You know, we heard that it's not. This is not a one trick pony. This is not a single one shot story. This is the beginning of many stories in Night Terrors and it's going to help build Tormentia and all the other other creative ideas that's that's in Bob's head. So, I really wanted to like showcase this part of it because I know that, you know, Let It Out has been always about, you know, promoting our guests um, and showing their works and drawing their OCs and promoting their IPs, but I really wanted people to really see how a successful crowdfunding um, uh, campaign can just take off. You know, just measure your expectations, be humble, and then let mm -hmm. the system work for you. And when you got talent, when you got work that that just backs up, you know, your work. I mean, your, you know, who you are. It's gonna it's gonna happen. You know, they will come. That's my Kevin Costner field of dreams things. Right. People will That's come. Nice. Uh, so, uh, Bob, yeah, do you want to add awesome, on one? Oh. Every time I see a new backer, I love it. Uh -huh. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Um, so you. You you deserve it, Bob. I'm so happy that that you're you know to be a guest on our show before and to see where you've come since September and to launch your first Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign and to be this you know to me it's successful. You know you you know yeah. you, you may not you not be like the uh you know like the million dollar campaigns, but this is a victory. Yeah, that's this the is next just campaign, man. You don't do that exactly. on the first. Exactly. That's the next one. Right. It's the second one. It's, oh, so the million dollars are coming on the next campaign. It's, it's, the million dollar campaign is coming. It is coming. Right. You know, uh, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Awesome. So, um, you know, I'm glad that we got a chance to talk about it. I'm going to, Bob, did you have anything else that you want to talk about your campaign aside from go back it? Not now, after the show's over, but go back this campaign. You will not be disappointed. You've seen what he, Bob is about. Great guy, great artwork, great campaign. It's he's a writer, he's a penciler, he's an inker, he's a colorist. You know, there's just so much to to Bob, and we just were th you know thrilled to have him here. So, Bob, do you have any? Did you have anything you want to talk about this campaign before we? Uh, you yeah. know what? Um, okay, guys, again, um, uh, my first printed physical comic, so I'm very very proud of it. Um, my first uh, successful Kickstarter campaign. Um, 
if you have any doubts or anything, feel free to message me. I get back to you immediately on uh, Kickstarter without wasting any time. If you have any questions or you might have a doubt about something, uh, I added a new tier today on Kickstarter because somebody messaged me and they were like, hey, I want the variant cover and I want one signed and one not signed. And no. I was like, well, okay. So I may, I put that up there. So now, and then oh. immediately he bought it. Okay. <laughs> so if anybody has that. anything, message me. Okay. I I'll do it. It's not a problem. Uh, it just yeah. takes a few minutes to, uh, to add that tier on there. And I, I, it's not a hard thing to do. And I'm already going to be printing physical uh, editions. So, you know, no problem there. Uh, and then, you know, if you guys like my stuff, follow me on the Facebook at, uh, at DIY Comics. Okay, oh, 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 oh. I can always use more followers and likes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Gonna, no, no. I want you to. You're going to do your Oscar speech afterwards. I'm going to because I want you to oh, talk oh, about. Okay, it. I got gotcha, you. I, gotcha. I, 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 I just want to make me. sure. You really <laughs> like me. You really like me. I just <laughs> want to talk about this particular Kickstarter, and I'm just going to reiterate what Bob is trying to say: is that this is a quality book. Um, it's ready to go. You, 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 you uh, choose to back him. You choose to believe in him. It's gonna it's gonna get in your hands. And I talked to Bob about like some ideas in terms of like maybe some future reward tiers. Uh, it's only gonna get better. You know, I don't know if he's gonna be able to add those in in the next you know twenty plus days. But every time that that number goes up, it's just the possibilities are are there, and there could be potential for additional merch, addi additional swag. Maybe we'll see some stickers, magnets. Mm. I have no idea. There could be all sorts of things. So you may have uh, some do-it-yourself uh, comics T-shirts. I have no idea. But every time that you do this, this is an example of a creator that is is you know Alton mentioned this earlier, the, and Joe mentioned it earlier, is that the money that you help to do this, it goes back into doing more creations. You know, he's not one shot, one trick pony. It's it's going to be more to it. So that's why I love independent creators. This is because my beginning, not my end. Exactly. So it's, this is just art. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super hungry. Got the hunger to make things happen. So <laughs> I'm going to stop here and we're going to go to uh, the part of the show. Uh, this is where I get kind of sad and teary eyed again, because this is where we're, we're winding it out. And I told you guys, I told you, Bob, and all of our shows are turning this way is they they they're long shows but they're so worth it because we we cover a lot of different things and and it yeah. doesn't seem that it doesn't feel like it's almost two and a half hours over two and a half hours it's so um what you didn't cover okay all that what artwork was... i sent you oh yes. yeah look okay. bring that up can we bring that up <laughs> bring, bring, that... To bring that up gerald this yes. is why you don't send it to jail yeah. send it to because <laughs> okay. gerald's gonna run the show <laughs> To be fair, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna get these things. I'm gonna go ahead and let let Bob do his his a uh, Oscar speech, um, Not, and yeah. then I will show. I'll, I'll build the art right yeah, now. Bring so, that up so. while Bob is doing his Oscar speech. Let's yes. go ahead and close sure, it. Yeah. So we can close it up. Okay, go ahead and go, Bob. Okay, so I can just go. Okay, first off, I'm gonna thank uh, you, Gerald, and you, Joe, for bringing me on the show. And introducing people to me, introducing me to other people. Uh, I know Alton is still watching. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I really want to thank him because he's an inspiration. OK, uh, sure. he he doesn't know it, but I studied a lot of what he was doing uh, and, and followed those rules, uh, you know, in order mm -hmm. to, to do what I'm doing right now. And then it's also awesome that he saw in me uh, that talent that I've been trying to show other people all this time and Alton like jumped on it. So that was really awesome. Um, again, thank all the backers if they're watching uh, this. Whoever backed the the Night Terrors comic, thank you because all it's going to do is allow me to make more comics for you, and that's going to be awesome. Uh, so I can have another Oscar speech like every month. Okay, so that'd be awesome. That's like <laughs> that's the dream. You. you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what. Yeah, that's okay. why I want to go. So again, uh, thank you guys. For me, since I was 16 and I picked up that first Todd McFarlane comic, I wanted to be a comic book artist. Okay, so now I'm I'm like finally achieving it. Like I put the rest of the stuff aside. This is what I'm focusing on. This is what I want to do. And now I'm bringing uh -huh. that dream to life, and you guys are helping. So it's awesome. Congrats, brother. It's good to meet you. Well deserved. Good to meet I, you. I yeah. Think, yeah, I think that that's uh, that was fantastic. I love hearing that, and it's it's one of the things that we pride ourselves here at Comics Cast and Comics Cast Let It Out is really showcasing talent and getting independent creators out there, getting their work out there. So um, I'm about ready to get a little weepy eyed here, uh, but let me let me break some. You know, let's 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 share the uh, let's share screens of, of the artwork that. Um, that Bob sent me at, the, at uh, I guess the middle of the show. So here we go. We got so these were photos that he just took really quickly, and I'm hoping they'll they'll they can because some of them are, are very penciling. So we saw this Captain Phasma here, and you can mm -hmm. see that this is a testament to Bob's skill. He it, 
what we saw digitally, he can do traditionally. So very, very cool. Um, Sarah says congratulations on on your uh, your Kickstarter. Oh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, Sarah. Okay. Oh crap. Uh, so let me see if I can zoom this in. Crap. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> here we go. I'm trying to zoom in here. So here we go. So um, here we get to see um, uh, a sequential piece. And now, to... now, are is any of this uh, roughs going into your next campaign with Alton? Do we need to be careful with any of these? No, all of this stuff is probably from about 10 years ago. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. so we're seeing the development oh, no, of what really is 10 years. Some of it's box. like 10 years. Some of it's probably about five years ago before I switched over to, uh, to, uh, to digital. digital. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you can see that this, you know, right. Joe was talking about um, about when we, were, he, when we were doing our live drawing, when he was talking about breaking down things in terms of like, you know, shapes, basic shapes and being able to show um, you know, build the foundation for your for your your illustration, and you can see here. This is a really good example of it because you can see the shapes there. The um, you know, Bob would go probably go in here and start adding more detail, but you can see, you get the sense of what this is. Uh, but you can see the basic shapes in here, and it and mm -hmm. this is a, a good lesson to any aspiring artist that they're watching here. What you, what you can do, what you need to do, um, and to build a really good, you know, a really good illustration, you know, paying attention to composition and, and coming up with these basic elements. Um, and I guess these are so like, here's a wonder woman. Um, mm -hmm. really, really great. They're shots. all penciled. So not everything was inked. Yeah. Uh, and I was taking the pictures really quick. So sorry guys. That's okay. Because I want people to get, you know, <laughs> I think they're a little bit low resolution, but it gets the gist of what you're trying to do here. And here, this is good storytelling. You don't hear, you don't see any word bubbles, but you see the way that he's laid out these panels. And of course, uh, Bob Styles evolved uh, since this pencil composition. Oh yeah, I mean, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But you get, you get the, you get the gist. I mean, this is the whole thing about good sequential storytelling is that maybe you don't need to, or if you, if you do it right, you don't need to have the word bubbles to like tell you what the story is. Um, let me zoom in here. This has a little bit. So here we go. We have yeah, the uh, little inking here. Yeah. So yeah. Oops. Uh, let me go to part of the screen. same uh, project at that time, which was about ten years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a good thing too that I want to show to people is like not every scene is going to be an epic battle. You know, it's not going to always mm -hmm. be a, a a a scene where you're going to have to tell. There's going to be a narrative beats where you have to do exposition where you're just telling a story of of people talking in a room, <laughs> people getting into a van. You know, it's like, uh, you, these are, Bob was mentioned something, practice drawing buildings. These are things that, um, mm -hmm. you know, as artists, we're so used to like, I got to draw the money shots. I got to draw the, you know, Hulk doing the beat down on a super villain, but there's a building in the background. But, but also, I mean, you also get to see a, a, an artist right now, you're having finished panels that are phenomenal. You get to see, Anyone who do, has done sequential work, you know, you get progressively better as you do each time. Yeah. And uh, it's mm -hmm. nice that people can say, oh, this was 10 years ago. This was about eight years ago. People progress as you keep working on it. And I can already see mm -hmm. all of your influences from Todd in these panels here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So it's just phenomenal. Like, I, I have a weird mix up between Todd and Jim Lee and Frank mm -hmm. Frazetta. So it doesn't really match up. So it's just sort of mm -hmm. a big mess of the thing that I become. Well, so that, it's nice to see I would that, say that I'm Todd, well. Eric Larson, Frank Miller is yeah, how I sure. try, to try exactly. to describe mine. I totally dig it. Yeah, I can feel that. And I think that that's another thing that I think uh, it's happened to me as an aspiring artist that it's okay to have it be influenced by artists that you admire, and then all you know you're thinking to yourself, "Hey, am I?" Am I emulating too much of my idol, you know, when I'm drawing? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. You're learning from them, of course, but you, in the end, you're developing your own style. Eventually, you'll figure out what parts of, of your influences make you as an artist. And, I, you know, that's something that I always was like so advanced. Like, I cannot copy as much as I love Jim Lee's artwork or Art Adams. I can't mm -hmm. copy them directly. But you know what? It's okay to, to to copy it as a learning tool, you know, because right. then you you'll develop your own style because it's it's developing that muscle memory, it's learning techniques, it's seeing what's successful, and then mm -hmm. going from there, you know, building your yeah. own style. And uh, I think that that's an important lesson too. And you know, here we go. We're yep. getting to see some more inked work here. Okay, and, so this was kind yeah. of tormentia from ten years ago when I was doodling around with the idea and started, you know, putting some stuff uh -huh. together, but never, you know, went forward with it. Uh huh. 
So that's another lesson too, is that Bob did this 10 years ago and now Tor he's doing projects that are going to make Tormentia happen. That's, that is the, um, that is what it. you should do. Stick with, it. stick with it. Yeah, Keep stick driving. with it. Your idea, what you came up with in high school, what you came up with 10 years, what you come up with something that yesterday, the point of the matter is to keep not sit on your hands and to keep moving forward, to get it done in 2021. That's my hashtag for this year. Um, right. But yeah, you, you see the, I, I definitely see McFarlane influence in this. This is really, really sure. classic stuff. Um, let me show. Yeah, then the backgrounds. The backgrounds are part of the character, guys. Like you said, Bob, earlier. It's yep. like, don't get uh, stuck drawing figures. You got to draw your background. So that's good yeah. stuff. Good advice. Yeah, that's something I got to listen to. And yeah, you can just see how Bob's style has evolved. Um, and here, I mean, yeah, this is just great. I mean, you see, you can really already see here how just from what we've been showing you, um, how much it's changed. And this is why I tell people, or at least what I'm trying to do is save everything that you do, uh, because it, I, I, Bob, I, I know you must find this very satisfying. You know, you're looking at this stuff right now. Obviously, you're, you're satisfied because we're sharing it now. But you can look at this too, and you can see the evolution of your style, right? I mean, um, by keeping yeah, this. Yeah, I really like this page you have up now. I actually forgot all mm -hmm. about this until I pulled it out. I was like, man, I remember this. <laughs> it's, it's rich. <laughs> yeah, it's very. It, it has so much. There's so much. In it, I mean, you see like lots of different inking techniques and shadow techniques and things like that. It's it's somebody who like for me, I hate inking. So when I see people that can ink, and you know this was new ten years ink. ago, yeah, I'm seeing what you yeah. did ten years ago and what you're doing now, uh, phenomenal. Um, I hope this is inspiring to everybody that's watching this because I all right, I'm, I'm gonna have to pull up the the pin on this thing now. Yep. We're okay. we're okay. almost at the top of the hour, so right. Let's, well, we are we are done. To us, so we, we somewhat did, we of a did time. Do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, for our week long show. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, All right, so. Daryl, let's, uh, let, let Bob <laughs> answer this question and then we'll uh, okay. we'll sort of roll out. So, Sarah asks advice on background hacks if possible. I think uh, we talked a little bit about using Photoshop and uh, some yes. some things like that, but what other uh, advice would you have on, on your backgrounds? I'll leave that question up. Sometimes you do not have to like, uh, sometimes you do not have to waste time being very detailed. When things are in the background, they're further away from the character, they can be blurred. So you're creating the illusion of something there, and it's actually the person looking at it where their brain fills in the blanks on its own and saves you a lot of the work. So like, you don't have to go that far. Sometimes you could just put a couple of blobs in the background and somehow that formed something. So that's something I learned uh, a long time ago that I'll stick with. Great advice, great advice. Uh, and you know, I, I have to say, <laughs> this is my excuse with, without doing backgrounds. If you have to do backgrounds, just like when you do references for poses for people, pull up, go to Google Images or Pinterest or whatever. Do research for um, for backgrounds for environments for your characters. And if you have to, tracing is not bad. Trace trace them. Get the muscle memory down. Uh, learn mm -hmm. the perspective part of it. Don't claim it as your own, obviously, but this is part of your learning experience as an artist. So, it um, is. You know, tracing you, is a great way to learn, especially when it comes to anatomy. Yeah. Yes, and then that, that use it as a as a tool, not as a crutch. You know, learn learn right. the forms. The like Joe was talking about the shapes that form. You know, whether it's anatomy or whether it's a building. You know, learn those 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 shapes, those forms, and then before you know it, it's in your. It's like Bob. Bob has mm -hmm. this great image bank. You're gonna have this mm -hmm. great bank of images in your head, and next thing you know, you won't have to look at those references because the reference will be embedded in your head because you, you did the muscle memory, you traced it, and you yep. you're gonna be able to draw it because you've committed it to memory. And you won't even have to think about it. Yeah. Well, I'm a long way. Because you already from that. did it ten thousand times. <laughs> oh, you can do it that way. Uh, so yeah, we we did your Oscar speech. I'm I'm so happy that we kind of did it in the reverse order. So we're gonna uh, move to the last part of the show where, um, you know, where we talk about our our charity partner. And let me pull that up real quick. And yeah, you want to bring that up? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Hmm, why don't I have it ready to go? Um, give me one moment. You think I would have this like completely like. Rookie number. My muscle memory. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me get this in here. Uh, it's like I got so I got so caught up in like hearing Bob's story that I I slipped up and didn't. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So let me get that up there. Okay. And there we go. All right. Here we go. So this is Golden Fight. Uh, Golden Fight is a our charity partner, uh, and 
they are a group that we I like to refer to as being big enough and small enough at the same time. Uh, small enough in the sense that they are not nationwide. They're very focused. They're in my neck of the woods. Um, it's a mid-Atlantic region, Virginia, Maryland, D.C., and big enough in the sense that they have big hearts. So the reason why Golden Fight is such, you know, why we, we love to work with them is, uh, or we want to promote them, is they have big hearts. What they do is they help families who have children that are dealing with difficult diseases like cancer. And that's uh, when, when that happens and the, and parents are dealing with the focusing on healing their child, uh, financial difficulties will happen. And that's where Golden Fight comes in. Golden Fight raises money for, for those families. So like I said, they can focus on their children. And Big Hearts, they basically 98, 97% of whatever money they raise goes directly to the families. That two or three percent that they they uh, use is for like administrative things, um, and 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 often the leadership and uh, people that work with Golden Fight they do it voluntarily because often they've had children or family members that are going through the same circumstances. So uh, check out GoldenFight.org um, if you want to read a little bit about them. Uh, we have we get nothing out of this except for sharing the love of this particular charity. Um, we just want to bring awareness to this organization. And if you would like to check it out, uh, the URL, let me pull that up. It's right here, goldenfight.org. And um, if you if you have it within your means and you'd like to chair, uh, donate to a great cause, this is one of them. So check that out. So uh, Bob, uh, Joe, did you want to add anything to that before I close uh, this Just that uh, the founder is a, a good work uh, friend of mine that I've known for a long time. He's a, he's a, he's a stand-up guy. Uh, when I started Comics Cast, I knew I wanted to do something uh, before Comics Cast. I worked with him uh, a couple of charity events and things like that. Um, and at some point, well, let's just not go to some point. We're going to try to do something with them at some point. But we definitely want to make sure that we're highlighting them just because, for me personally, it's a charity that I can definitely trust. I trust the people involved in it. And we're absolutely 100%. Comics Cast is not a part of their organization or gets any funding uh by mentioning them or any donations that you guys feel like doing so it's just a thing that i know for a fact that they put a lot of hard work and love into the people that they work with and uh, any any way of chair uh, of, of helping uh, that you guys can do uh would be amazing so that's why we bring it up every week because i think it's something that needs to be talked about yeah well said well said so let me do this the and, link uh, is in the chat if you guys yeah, link is in the chat. So check that out. Find that work. And so one last time, I'm going to flash uh, this, which is how you can follow Bob. Uh, Bob Heron on Facebook, DIY Comics on Facebook, and doityourselfcomics at gmail.com if you'd like to. If you just like to talk to him, send him an email, hire him, uh, maybe pick his brain for, for maybe, you know, I, I think that anything bob is bob is a great guy and i'm sure that he would be more than willing to share his thoughts on any questions that you have about his process his books some of the things that he's going to be doing check out his his uh um his kickstarter campaign which is already funded but i can just tell you that it's going to get it's just going to go get better over the next 20 plus days you know we're going to possibly see more rewards uh some reward tiers, some more swag that's going to be coming out of it and again, it's going to go towards just building more ideas, making those ideas that are trapped, not trapped, they're coming out of your, your head right now. And they're going to be new ideas, new IPs, new books coming out. You're going to be helping uh, fund a great creator. Um, so, yeah, so Thank you. that's all, all I got to say. Um, love our audience. Love our guests. Um, just follow us on uh, Comics Cast on Facebook and Indie Comics Cast on YouTube. Check out all of our videos. Uh, be inspired by what our guests bring to the table. So you guys have a good Sunday. We love you all, and we'll see you next Sunday. Take us out, Joe.